can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story chapter 501, a traveler's necessity novel, Legend of Wukong. Afternoon, a little past 5 p.m. At the Wu residence. Zhong Yi had driven up to the villa's doorway and gave a honk from his car before looking over at the direction of the villa. A moment later, the garage door was remotely opened by someone in the villa and he drove in to park the car. As Wu Ziqing's white BMW was already inside, there wasn't much space left to maneuver and Zhong Yi took the entire day to get his car parked properly. He was mainly concerned about not scratching old Wu's car since his own car was a bulletproofed X5, which he didn't need to worry about. Even if someone tried to scratch it, they probably wouldn't leave much of a mark on it. He stepped out of his car and went into the house. The door was left open. Sis Wu. Zhong Yi greeted as soon as he stepped in. A graceful figure standing in the open concept kitchen looked up. Wu Ziqing smiled and said, You're here. Come in and take a seat, but help me close the door behind you. Sure. Zhong Yi closed the door and removed his shoes, do you have any slippers? Wu Ziqing wiped her hands and went over to him, there's a pair that you used the previous time. I will go look for them. Zhong Yi quickly tried to stop her, don't bother, I will look for it myself. It's fine. You take a seat. Wu Ziqing squatted in front of the shoe rack and opened it up to look for the slippers. He hadn't seen Sis Wu in a while and Zhong Yi rather missed her already. Today, Wu Ziqing was dressed in a brown knitted sweater that seemed to be quite loose fitting and graceful at the same time. I found it. Wu Ziqing took the slippers out. Zhong Yi was about to change into it, thanks a lot. Wu Ziqing held up his legs and put the slippers on him before going to wash her hands and to prepare a pot of tea for Zhong Yi. She placed a platter of fruits and sunflower seeds in front of him before returning to the kitchen to continue preparing dinner. She did not resemble a high-ranking authority figure at all, but simply felt like a homemaker. A while later, the dishes were prepared and dinner was ready. Wu Ziqing sat opposite of him, smiling and saying, try it. Zhong Yi picked up his chopsticks and said a little embarrassingly, Sis Wu, you're being too kind to me. You're like this every time I visit, refusing to let me pour my own tea or help with preparing meals. I can't even help you with menial tasks like those and I feel quite bad about it. I can't always be freeloading off you this way. He had rushed over, so he did not have time to stop by somewhere to get a little gift for the visit. The brain gold products in his car were clearly unsuitable since that product was from the company of Wu Ziqing's nephew, Wu Mo. If Sis Wu wanted any of that, all she had to do was to say so. Zhong Yi couldn't possibly present to Buddha with some borrowed flowers, so he came empty-handed. There were no wrinkles on Wu Ziqing's graceful-looking face, none that could be seen anyway, I'm not fussy about such things. If there's someone to join me and accompany me for meals, I could eat a little more that way. Here, try this. Hum, it's really good. Then have more. Sure, I won't hold back. After the meal, Zhong Yi did not hesitate and insisted on washing the dishes by taking them to the basin. But as he was running the water, he got stopped by Wu Ziqing who was walking slowly over from behind. She gently pulled Zhong Yi away from the washing area, don't make big sis angry. Go out and watch TV. Zhong Yi said, I will wash the dishes, I will wash them. Wu Ziqing would not have any of his excuses and lightly pulled him aside, step aside. Old Wu's arm was squeezing against Zhong Yi's chest and that made his heart skip faster. He did not dare to move a muscle against old Wu, so he stepped back unwillingly and just looked on as old Wu washed the dishes. He did not move anywhere and just stood at that spot to chat with her, I saw some luggage in the living room. Are you going somewhere or did you just return home? Wu Ziqing replied softly, I just got home. I had wanted to plan a trip somewhere during the new year, but not long ago, I received a notification to attend training at a party training institution. Zhong Yi asked, are you going to get promoted soon? She replied, it's just a switch of roles and can't be considered as a promotion. Zhong Yi said, that's still some sort of a promotion, congratulations. Where will you be posted? I still do not know the details, but for now, I am still considered to be a part of Peking University. Wu Ziqing put down a place, if nothing goes wrong, I should be transferred to the south, to the publicity department. Zhong Yi blinked, so far away. 
Wu Zeqing nodded, it's not near. Why didn't they transfer you to another university? Zhang Yi asked. Wu Zeqing smiled, Big Sis was only at Peking University temporarily. As I did not start off in an academic role, I can't possibly be transferring around school postings. I've got experience in education, publicity work, and overseen city investor programs. After all these years, I've dabbled in all sorts of work before and do not mind being transferred to any kind of work. I will do whatever the organization arranges for me, but since the order has not yet been passed, I might not necessarily be posted to the south. Zhang Yi felt a little unwilling to see her go, when will you be leaving? It should be soon, but I will need to wait for the news. When she had spoken up till here, she turned around to look at Zhang Yi, that's why I asked you to come over today, so that I could tell you about this. I know that your ban was not warranted, but as my position in Peking University has already been handed over, it wasn't convenient for me to represent Peking University to speak for you. That might create more trouble for you instead of helping you since I am no longer in that position. Zhang Yi said, I understand, it's fine. Wu Zeqing said, when some time has passed and I have settled down in my new post, I will see if I can help you in some way, but don't carry too much hopes about that because I can only try my best to think of a way for you. Zhang Yi understood and accepted her kind intentions, that's all I need from you, it's fine. Don't bother yourself with this problem of mine anymore. It's too troublesome. It's not easy to handle, that's true. Wu Zeqing finished washing the dishes, what are your plans? Zhang Yi smiled and said, I don't have any plans nor can I plan for it. The road ahead has already been blocked, so anything I do is of no use. I suppose I will just stay at home. She asked, and do nothing? Zhang Yi said, what else can I do? She raised her chin and gestured, come on, let's go to the second floor and have some tea. The both of them headed upstairs. They went into the room and sat down cross-legged around a small table after taking off their slippers. Wu Zeqing started to make some tea, brewing as she said, that wasn't something that would come from your mouth. The little Zhang that I knew was not like this. In the past, when Zhang Yi was lecturing on a dream of the Red Chamber, everyone else had objected and raised doubts against him except for Wu Zeqing, who had supported him. When Zhang Yi related to others what his goal was, they would all take him to be a joke except for Wu Zeqing, who believed that he could really achieve his goal. She had given him a lot of encouragement and suggestions. But today, Wu Zeqing's tone had felt like it carried a hint of criticism for the first time. Banned from TV and the news and your published books were taken down as well. The ban issued by the SARFT against the entertainment industry this time was really strict, but just because you have been banned, you would rather choose to do nothing? Zhang Yi was speechless. She continued, where is the Zhang Yi that said something like, debasement is the password of the base, during a live broadcasted news conference after being banned? Where did that Zhang Yi, who still wanted to create trouble at the crawlstalk competition after being banned, disappear to? You have the talent and a mind full of knowledge, so you cannot be beaten down just like that. Don't just give up because you can't get on TV or publish any material. If that's how you are going to be, then you've really disappointed Big Sis. Who was the one who told me that he wanted to be the top star of the world that night? Is your determination just words hanging out from your mouth? Zhang Yi continued to stay silent. Wu Zeqing looked at him softly, don't let down the fans who like you so much. Don't be blinded because of fame. It will still be the same with or without promotions and it won't matter even if you don't get to appear on TV. I believe that even if you are banned, there would still be many fans waiting for your works. Show them something, create something for your fans to see and show your opposers what you're capable of. Show it to everyone and tell them that even if you are banned, even if all the television stations, media outlets, and publishers refuse to let you through their doors, that you will remain standing. You still have your mouth and you can still speak. You still have your hands and you can still write, so why would you choose to remain at home and doing nothing? Old Wu's criticism had beaten some sense into him at the right time and had allowed Zhong Yi to realize a lot as well. He was too focused on popularity and fame. The ban would not be able to shut his mouth or tie his hands, and he could still do whatever he wanted to do, same as before. The things that he had wanted to show to the people should not be stopped just because no one was willing to broadcast it out for him. 
since it had already come to such a situation, since there was no way the ban would be lifted at the moment, then shouldn't he just not care about all of that and just do whatever he wanted? So what if there was less popularity to be gained from this? At least it would be better than doing nothing. Besides, with the exposure from the crawlstalk competition, he could create something and there shouldn't be a lack of popularity to be gained. It might even surpass his expectations. John E. coughed, you were right to say all of that. What do you think I should do next? What could he come up with? He still didn't have an idea. Wu Zuching calmly thought about it and said, you could write a novel and post it online onto your blog. In this world, blogs were still not falling behind with the times yet. Zhong Yi asked, novels? She said, I've read your Ghost Blows Out the Light before and there haven't been any new works ever since. I've been rather looking forward to a new novel written by you for some time now. Hearing that, Zhong Yi agreed without even thinking, all right, I will write a novel. Wu Ziqing looked up at him, Big Sis was just suggesting, but it still depends on your own interest and ideas. It's just something that I look forward to, but that doesn't mean the fans think the same way. John Yi slapped his hands on the table, it's settled, I will write a novel. It didn't matter what work he came up with. As long as Old Wu liked it, John Yi would write for her. Wu Ziqing nodded, in another two days, my posting would be settled. I guess I will be busy for some time after that and would only have time to read after I've settled down into my new job a little. Old Wu was really going. And she would be leaving in just a few more days? When he heard this, Zhong Yi felt a sudden desire to write his novel. He had a sip of tea before standing up and saying, no need to wait for next time, I will allow you to read it today. She smiled and said, what do you mean? Zhong Yi said, I will write it right now. She said, you seem really eager, but I only just suggested for you to write a novel and you already have an idea. Of course he did. When it came to writing novels, he definitely had an idea that did not need any conceptualization and planning, because it was a traveler's necessity novel. Legend of Wukong. Chapter 502, A New Work. Old Wu's Room. Zhong Yi had just started doing what he said he would do. A, this sounds like an euphemism for. He started writing just like he had promised he would. Zhong Yi looked around and asked, you have a computer around here? I have a few, but you can use the one in the study room since it's already been set up properly. Wu Ziqing gently put down her tea cup and pressed on the Chinese classical looking tea table to support herself in standing up, come, I'll bring you there. Zhong Yi responded, okay, sure. She led the way and asked, are you really serious about writing it now? Zhong Yi asked her in response, do you want to read it now? Like I said, I really enjoyed reading your novel. After finishing, Ghost Blows Out the Light, I'd been waiting for your new work. If I get to read it today, that would be best. They reached the study room and Wu Ziqing gracefully pushed open the door and went into the room, but of course you must write it well enough and not just come up with something random. That would disappoint me and also disappoint your fans, so I'd suggest that you spend some time conceptualizing before you start writing. Even if I get posted in the South for work, I can still get to read it online. But Zhong Yi did not listen, if you wish to read it, I must definitely let you read it by today. I will get it done if I say so. Hearing that, Wu Ziqing did not go on and just switched on the computer for him, all right then, I will wait for the good news. Zhong Yi asked, what genre do you like? As long as it's written by you, I'm fine with whatever genre. Wu Ziqing smiled gently, I believe in your abilities. Ever since I invited you to join Peking University, I've never doubted you. Suddenly, Zhong Yi felt considerably pressured, I won't have enough time to write a long one, how about a medium-length one? I will spread it out over a few days and just do a portion of it today, posting as I finish. She smiled and said, that sounds good. I will start writing now then. Zhong Yi said. Wu Ziqing nodded and left the room so that she would not disturb him, closing the door behind her. Zhong Yi was now left alone in the study. He took a deep breath and opened up the game rings interface to see his reputation points. A few days ago, he had used up all of it for his lottery draws, and couldn't even afford to purchase the lowest valued item of 10,000 reputation points. He had been crazy poor, but in a short time of two to three days, Zhong Yi's reputation points had soared again because of the three crawlstalk performance. 
With that, he immediately opened up the merchant shop and bought some memory search capsules. He bought a total of three capsules as he was worried that one would not be enough, spending a total of 30,000 points. Eat. He retrieved them from his inventory and threw the capsules into his mouth. One capsule. Two capsules. Three capsules. He ate three capsules at once and closed his eyes. Instantly, he was brought back to deep within his memory as he started wandering through all of those forgotten memories. Why did he choose Legend of Wukong? Firstly, because this novel was one of the most classic novels in his previous world. Secondly, because the chapter length was more suitable for him to write out in the coming few days, not too long nor too short, so Wu Ziqing could finish reading it before she left for her new post. Thirdly and most importantly, in this novel was a point that Zhang Yi had wanted to express to everyone. It was a message that he wanted to let everyone know about after being banned and after taking part in the crosstalk competition, and so it had to be this novel, a necessary novel for a world-crossing traveler. At 6 p.m. sharp, Zhang Yi opened his eyes and his hand reached for the mouse. He created a new document and his fingers started typing furiously at a high speed. Legend of Wukong Title, Chapter 1 The four of them had already came to this point, a dense forest ahead of them, with no signs of a path. Wukong, I'm hungry. Go and look for some food and bring it back here, said Monk Tang as he clambered onto a large rock and took a seat on it. I'm a little busy over here, why don't you go look for it yourself? It's not like you don't have legs. Sun Wukong said holding onto his staff. You're busy? With what? Don't you think that the sunset looks beautiful? Sun Wukong said as his eyes looked towards the horizon, only looking at something so beautiful could make me determined enough to carry on westward. You could always look at that while searching for food. As long as you don't bump into a large tree, it will be fine. I refuse to do anything else when I'm enjoying the sunset. Sun Wukong, you can't be this way. How can you bully Baldi this way? If you let him starve to death, we won't be able to find our way to the western regions. If we don't find the western heavens, then the curses on our bodies will never be lifted, said Pigsy. Being a modern person, Zhong Yi's typing speed wouldn't be that slow. Besides, the current activity he was doing was different from chatting or writing papers. He did not have to think about it, think of what to write next, or hesitate. The words were imprinted in his brain and whichever words appeared in his mind would immediately be transferred over to the document. It was even faster than copying directly from the original manuscript. It was only natural that he could type like he was flying through the words. Half an hour. An hour. From the study room, the continuous tapping sound of the keyboard could be heard. It wasn't just any sound, but a sound that would make the soul tremble. It was quick and light, but gave a sense of stability, within that stability, it exuded a grand aura. The grand aura was mixed with a force not unlike a dragon leaping or a tiger jumping. It was quiet, but the movement was. Okay, the descriptions should stop here. In any case, it was the sound of typing on a keyboard very quickly. Behind him, the door to the study room opened. Zhong Yi, who was fully concentrated on the computer screen, didn't notice until a shadow of a figure appeared beside him. He saw Wu Ziqing standing behind him. Sis Wu. He stopped typing. Wu Ziqing was holding a tray with a cup of coffee on it. She placed it on the table and used a spoon to give it a few stirs. Smiling, she said, just continue doing what you were doing. If you get tired, have something to drink. Zhong Yi quickly said. Thank you. Wu Ziqing's had a blanket over her left arm which she opened up and spreading it across Zhong Yi's legs, it's a little cold in this house, so cover up to keep warm. Aya, it's okay. Zhong Yi was spoiled by the attention. Wu Ziqing gently said, cover up well. Listen to big sis. Zhong Yi could only say, thank you then. Don't busy yourself with me. If you are tired, go have a rest. Although she was no longer the president of Peking University, she was still a leader. Seeing how old Wu was giving him so much attention, Zhong Yi felt rather bad about it. It's only a little past 7 p.m., and so it's still early. Wu Ziqing smiled, I still need to wait to read your novel. If I don't get to read it today, I won't be able to sleep. 
Keep it up, I will close the door for you. He said, okay. Old Wu left and closed the door. Zhong Yi drank the coffee in large gulps and touched the blanket that was covering his legs. He suddenly felt a warmth, thinking how Old Wu was such a caring and thoughtful person. For Old Wu. Right. 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 Zhong Yi started to show his prowess as his typing speed became even faster. After a short while, the first chapter was complete. This was a slightly longer chapter that contained a little over 6,000 characters. He did not say anything since he knew that Old Wu was waiting to read it. One of the reasons why he decided to write a novel today was not only because he had listened to Old Wu's criticisms, but a larger part of it was because he wanted Old Wu to be able to read his novel, and only then was Zhong Yi be able to write with such passion. He was always a guy who would find it hard to reject a girl. And so, Zhong Yi opened up the browser and speedily logged onto his Weibo, synchronized his account, and then activated his blog. The development of Weibo and blogs in this world was a little different from his previous world. The blogging platform here had been the dominant one since its release and there weren't too many other competitors as Weibo, was also developed from this blogging platform and forked out into a product of its own. As such, the sign-in ID between these two platforms were shared since they were products of the same company anyway. Most of the information and functionalities were also cross-functional and were synchronized to the account. It was extremely convenient as anything posted to the blog could be posted onto Weibo in a summarized version too. Upload. Post. The controls were simple and the process of posting was completed very quickly. Zhong Yi shouted towards the door of the room, Sis Wu, I've written a little and posted up a chapter already. A very gentle voice replied from outside, on your blog? Yes. Zhong Yi replied. Okay, I will read it, and she didn't say a word after that. Zhong Yi did not want to delay as he knew that even though this world had Journey to the West, there wasn't a parody Journey to the West, which was the basis of characters for Legend of Wukong. That might leave the readers a little confused at the beginning as these characters were a little obscure. He had to rush out the back chapters so that the readers would be able to understand the initial few chapters of the novel. The second chapter's word count was much lesser at 2,000 to 300 characters. Zhong Yi wanted to finish it in 30 minutes, so he concentrated hard and typed in furiously on the keyboard. On the web. Everyone was chatting about news concerning their own interests. Have you all watched old his movie? I did. It was so good. Water Goddess has a new song out. Damn, I'm so frustrated by her, she's too good at making the news. But her popularity is sky high right now. Anything she posts onto Weibo are always reposted a few hundred thousand times and always has a few million comments. Everyone just likes her for doing all that nonsensical stuff. To be honest, I still prefer Zhong Yi. Although his popularity is not as high as those other people and his works are not as mainstream and well publicized as others, he has really good talent. If he were as handsome as the mainstream stars and his works were more publicized, his popularity would surely improve a lot and would overtake those stars who use publicity to pump up their popularity. I agree with that. If teacher John were to carry on walking down this path, his popularity would definitely go against the heavens. He's not even debuted for a full year yet, at most it's been half a year and he's already sprinting towards the B-list celebrity rankings. Haha, ha, did all of you watch the crawlstalk competition? I was so tickled by it. Zhong Yi was too funny. Those antics of his nearly made me die of laughter. How did he crush the whole crawlstalk competition all by himself? He's really too good at stirring up trouble. I really think that Zhong Yi would do well. As long as he can continue doing what he does and the entertainment industry gives him a chance, he would definitely become a dominant presence in this F asterisk asterisk king entertainment business. What a pity that he has been banned. Sigh, don't talk about that anymore. I get angry whenever someone mentions it. I wonder what teacher Jong is doing now. What else can he do? He's been totally banned. He won't even be able to take part in competitions now since who would dare to allow him join any at all. This is literally a death sentence and I'm afraid teacher Jong will not be able to get out of this now. Suddenly, someone exclaimed. Jong Yi started a blog. F asterisk asterisk K, what's the big deal about that? 
It's just a blog, isn't it? What do you think? Go take a look quickly. There's a novel posted on the blog. It's something called A Legend of Wukong. I think it's John Yi's new work. What? Are you serious? Damn, it's for real. Chapter 503, I want for the sky to not cover my eyes. Online. By now, people who followed Zhong Yi had discovered the groundbreaking news. Let me go take a look. I'm really looking forward to this. Did he really come up with a new piece of work? What kind of novel is it? I think it's an adaptation of Journey to the West. Why isn't there a synopsis available? There's only one chapter? I don't care anymore. A novel by John E. surely can't go wrong, I will read it even if there's only one chapter. Since Ghost Blows Out the Light was released, I've hardly come across any novels that could be considered remotely good. I've been waiting for so long for Zhong Yi's new novel and it's finally here. It seems to me that teacher Zhong Yi has no intentions of just disappearing like this. He has not given up. Can't get published? Then he will write and post it online. Surely they can't ban him if it's posted online? Giving support to teacher Zhong. I'm here to support too. Wang Wu from Zhong Yi's fan club has arrived. Big Dumb Pot from Zhong Yi's fan club reporting in. Big Biscuit from Zhong Yi's fan club has arrived. If you do not leave me, I will always be at your side until the end of life. This was the motto of Zhong Yi's fan club on the Chiebar forums. My large saber is again again unable to endure the thirst. Ha ha, big saber bro always has such a domineering entrance. It's just a novel, so surely you don't need to sharpen your saber for that. President Wu was right. There was definitely still some disadvantage in publishing it online. There was no way to publish and market it to attract more readers, but those who really liked Zhong Yi were still around. They had not given up on him and came rushing over almost immediately when the blog post was published. Many people had already started reading. Some of Zhong Yi's friends had also noticed that his blog had a newly published post and curiously went to check it out. Like Zhong Yi's eldest younger sister. Like Peking University's teacher Su N.A. Like Yao Jiantsai and his daughter, Yao M.I. Everyone knew that Zhong Yi had talent. When his new novel was released, it was only natural that people would be enticed to check it out. Even some media agency staff and publishing agencies subconsciously checked out Zhong Yi's blog to read this novel. The media would not report on this, nor would the publishers publish this novel, but it did not mean that they were not curious about it. They all wanted to find out for themselves what Zhong Yi's new novel was about. Was it about the supernatural? Or was it other genres? A thousand, five thousand, ten thousand. The click rate did not rise too quickly, but it wasn't slow either. Soon, everyone had gone to the, the blog to read the novel. Some people were faster at reading, while others took their time to read. But without exception, after reading a little, everyone was a little stunned because this novel felt strangely familiar to them. It was familiar because it used Journey to the West as a backdrop with the same characters in it, but it was also unfamiliar to them since the characters had very different backstories and styles to them. Their language styles also left many people wondering how the characters were really like. Almost the entire chapter was presented in a dialogue progression way to the readers. It was very strange. No one had ever read such a genre of novel before. What was Zhong Yi writing about? What was he trying to present? At this point in time, many readers were still unclear of what this would all lead to. There had only been one chapter released so far and it was a little confusing. Some comments were left on the post. Who can understand this? I don't understand it. What is it about? It feels just SOSO. A little obscure and doesn't feel like it will be as good as Ghost Blows Out the Light. Dot. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's storytelling. It's not even at the standard of Journey to the West. Dot. I find it okay. I will continue to read it since I feel this is written quite stylishly. The words and language are really good, but the story is still a little confusing. This is only the first chapter, so I think it will be amazing. Ha ha ha, I like this legend of Wukong. The characters in the novel seem really interesting. Yes, it's really interesting. There were both good reviews and bad reviews. 
because there were no promotions or media reports, the popularity was just SOSO. The number of people commenting were mainly Zhong Yi's hardcore fans. Soon after, Zhong Yi posted the second chapter. Chapter 2, Monk Tang and his two other disciples were eating some fruits in front of the fire. Sun Wukong emerged and walked over slowly from the woods. Monk Tang raised his head up and said, Hey, you've come over? Please take a seat. Sun Wukong did not say a word and just sat down, staring at the fire. Hey, what's the matter with you today, monkey? Pixie asked, You look as though you've been beaten silly by someone. Ha 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 ha. Another chapter's been posted. There's a new chapter. Why didn't he just post them together? Teacher Jong really knows how to make people wait. He's just posted another chapter just now. Could it be that Zhong Yi is posting as soon as he completes writing each chapter? Ah. Then that would mean Teacher Zhong is writing all of these so quickly. Using such dialogue and words. Doesn't he need time to think through and conceptualize? F asterisk asterisk K, this might be true. Didn't Zhong Yi used to write poems or essays without needing to plan or think first? They were all composed spontaneously. Let's not even mention the other amazing things. Just this alone would mean that Zhong Yi's really crazy good. Let me read it first. I'm already finished reading it. Ah, it's beginning to get interesting. Yeah, I can feel that it will be getting better and better as well. Looks like it will be a great novel. And then, the third chapter was posted, followed by the fourth chapter and then the fifth chapter. After another two to three hours had passed, more and more people found out about Zhong Yi's new novel. They all began to gather at his blog to take a look. Although his popularity did not increase as much as his previous works, it was still slowly increasing and increasing. It kept increasing. A lot of people starting reading the novel seriously, even though the beginning seemed a little obscure in the story's development, but when they got to the newer chapters, their hearts would become heavy. They couldn't take their eyes off and had a strong desire to finish reading in one breath. Quickly post the next chapter. Supporting Teacher Zhong. This novel is too damn amazing. I might not understand it, but I can feel that this novel can only get better and better. Within this short duration, some people even went back to the first chapter to reread, while some even reread several times. They carefully savored the feeling of rereading and became more fascinating with each read. Big Saber Bro shouted, the sixth chapter is about to be posted. Big Saber Bro was the current leader of the fan club. With her lead, everyone kicked themselves into gear and contributed towards generating more buzz. The sixth chapter. Come on, post it. It's at the cliffhanger. Why did it end? Finally, at 10.30 pm, the sixth chapter was published. With the new update, many readers couldn't be bothered to post comments and rushed to start reading the sixth chapter. It was getting more and more addictive. But there were still some people who still couldn't understand the story. The wind is here, is it really that good? There's a ghost behind my back 05, I can only understand a little, but those deities seem to be quite evil. They just seem to be causing all sorts of trouble. I wonder what Zhong Yi is trying to say through this. I have to read further to find out. Suddenly, a reader was stunned. And then followed by the second person, the tenth person, the hundredth person. At the end of the chapter. Xuan Zhang, Monk Tang's name, you're an intelligent person. Stay by my side from now on to practice Buddhism. I will teach you all of my knowledge from my life of learning. Actually. I feel that it would be better if I stayed in the deacon like I did in the past. I can do some gardening when I'm free or watch the sky too. I don't think that I can memorize all those Buddhist scriptures. If you don't learn with dedication, how can you gain my mantle? But you were not willing to teach to me the things that I wanted to learn. What did you wish to learn? When they read up to the final lines of the sixth chapter, everyone's faces turned to dismay. Some people had goosebumps, while others experienced pupil dilation in their eyes. There were also those that who exclaimed loudly in front of their computers, or those whose hands were trembling from the excitement. At this moment, they could only relate all of this to Zhong Yi. They remembered Zhong Yi being banned by decree number 43 and the past few days where he had been boycotted.
and denounced by the organizers of the crawstalk competition, as well as the members of the crawstalk and folk art worlds. They thought of Zhong Yi, who would rather be brought to the detention center for seeking justice for the commoner by beating up Li Anson. They remembered that even when he was misunderstood by the world, he still had no regrets nor thought that he had done anything wrong. What was Zhong Yi trying to express? What message was Legend of Wukong trying to send? At this moment, everyone's hearts were set aflutter by the text of the novel. What was it that he wanted to learn? I want for the sky to not cover my eyes. I want for this land to not bury my heart. I want for all sentient beings to be able to understand my intentions. I want for all those Buddhas to disappear from my life. Chapter 504, Well-Received Reactions It exploded. John Yi's blog exploded with views. Heavens! This passage is godly. It gave me goosebumps all over. What a great I want for the sky to not cover my eyes. Teacher Zhong is still Teacher Zhong. He's still as good as ever. He just doesn't disappoint. I was wrong. I doubted the quality of this novel when it was first released and even said that this was not up to Teacher Zhong Yi's usual standards. But I finally f asterisk asterisk king understand this novel. This Legend of Wukong is definitely a masterpiece. Teacher Zhong Yi is trying to send a message through his novel. His writing from his experiences from the past few days and channeling in his anger and considerations of everything that has happened. He is letting everyone know by pouring all of the emotion from his heart into this novel for everyone to see. This passage is a real classic. I want for all those Buddhas to disappear from my life. Zhong Yi is really daring to write his heartfelt thoughts. Teacher Zhong has always spoken through his work. This time is no exception either. The only difference is that he has always used poems to scold others, but this time he changed the medium to a novel. Ha 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 ha. I dare not claim that teacher Zhong Yi's literary level is the top in this country. But his face smacking level has to be the top. He is f asterisk asterisk king using the characters to represent the crawstalk world and related people and scolding them in it. I think this is too awesome. This style of writing is so godly. Teacher Zhong is invincible. It's so well written that it makes my blood boil. Reading Zhong Yi's novel just makes me feel so fulfilled. It's so good that I'm crying. This is what you call a f asterisk asterisk king novel. How I wish those crawstalk people can see this. At Tangdazhang at Xuwenxiong at Crawstalk Association at Folk Arts Association. You people are really good at accusing Zhong Yi for being vulgar and not understanding what art is. But now teacher Zhong Yi has thrown out a new work and its artistic levels are good enough to fling you a hundred streets away. A person who is able to come up with such a good novel doesn't know what art is? Teacher Zhong does not perform crosstalk according to your rules because he doesn't want to associate with you lot. But you guys still call him out so much that makes it seem like you're addicted to calling him out just for the sole purpose of calling him out. You bunch of people are precisely the ugly and evil deities in A Legend of Wukong. Mwahaha. This novel is so well written to fit the occasion. It completely portrays the current situation that Teacher Zhong is in now. One for the sky to not cover my eyes? Domination. Such domination. Teacher Zhong. I do not know if the sentient beings understand you, but we do. We completely understand. Why is this novel getting such low click rates? Such an awesome novel. Why isn't anyone reading it? It's because the media outlets aren't helping Teacher Zhong promote it. He's still banned, so most people do not know that Zhong Yi has a new work released. Damn. How hateful. After reading Legend of Wukong. I find them them even more hateful now. I did not know how much pressure Teacher Zhong Yi had to bear with in the past, but after reading this novel, I think I finally understand. I have nothing to say. Except that I am supporting Zhong Yi unconditionally. They won't help to promote? They want to ban Teacher Zhong? Let's do it. We fans will help him promote instead. Right. Let's do it. Well said. Count me in. There were already a lot of people who liked the Legend of Wukong novel, but with this, they liked it even more now. The people who did not understand the meaning, or those who did not really like it at first, 
now changed their views about it and were fighting to give their reviews about it. Some people even started to help Zhong Yi promote the novel on Weibo and other forums to allow more exposure for Zhong Yi's new work. On Weibo, Zhong Yi released a new novel. Come and see. On Tieba, Zhong Yi's new novel Legend of Wukong. Link below. On a forum, extra, extra. Zhong Yi has written a new novel after half a year of hiatus from writing. The Godlike Teacher Zhong Yi. And the Godlike Legend of Wukong. Everything can be seen on Zhong Yi's blog. Go and check it out. If you don't like it, feel free to beat me up. Everyone's promotion seemed to work as a large influx of new readers surged in. Of course, not all of the people who read the novel liked it. Some people felt it was a little too obscure, or that the genre did not fit their taste in novels, so they left after just reading a little, but a larger number of people stayed to finish reading all six chapters. They were all left amazed, like those before them, especially with their thoughts lingering about the final sentences. Many of them were left with their blood boiling. The click rate was increasing. 100,000. 200,000. 300,000. At the Wu residence. Upstairs in the villa, in the study room. Zhong Yi had finished writing the sixth chapter and did not plan on writing any more for today. Firstly, this was because he had written to the most suitable chapter of his intentions and it would be good to stop here. Secondly, he did not have the energy to continue writing any further. He had typed out too many characters in these past few hours and was totally drained. He felt dizzy as the concentration sapped him more than anything physical would. This kind of tiredness did not affect him physically, but mentally, which made him feel much more uncomfortable. He stretched his waist. Gururu, a sound came from his stomach. He was hungry. Zhong Yi touched his belly, knowing that he had really exhausted himself this time, but he was at Wu Ziqing's house now and it would be awkward for him to go downstairs to look for food. He did not know how to cook either and old Wu's house probably did not have a large stockpile of instant noodles. If he were to go check the fridge, it would be as good as asking old Wu to cook for him. It didn't feel right, so Zhong Yi decided to just deal with it. He just had a few more sips of water hoping that it would help alleviate his hunger. Dong, dong, dong. A knocking sound came from the door behind him, I'm coming in, okay. Zhong Yi quickly said, please come in, please come in. Old Wu was really respectful towards him. This was her house after all and she held a higher position than him at work, yet she still knocked on the door courteously before coming in. Sigh, how good it would be to marry old Wu. When the door opened, a fragrant aroma of kanji filled the room. Wu Ziqing was holding a bowl of steaming hot kanji and made her way slowly into the room, are you hungry? Zhong Yi was so touched that he immediately stood up to get it from her, Ayo, be careful. Don't scald yourself. I'll take it from here. Sit down. Get something to put on the table so that I can place this down. Wu Ziqing did not allow him take the bowl, it's very hot, don't take it. Zhong Yi immediately said, my skin is rough and thick, so I'm not afraid of being scalded, but your hands are more delicate. Wu Ziqing laughed a little and placed the bowl of porridge on the table. Big sis is not that fragile. This was just prepared a short while ago, so eat it while it's still hot. Zhong did not know what to say, how did you know I was hungry? My stomach growled a little just now, but I was a little embarrassed to go downstairs to look for food. Wu Ziqing said, you've written so much just now, so I guess that you were probably getting hungry as well. I went to prepare the kanji a while ago, so eat it first. Is the taste good? Good. Zhong Yi did not say too much. He knew that old Wu was good to him and he would remember this. Their relationship hadn't been too ordinary to begin with. Like old Wu's nephew, Wu Mo had received Zhong Yi's help along with Ode of Mulan, which Zhong Yi had written for her. There were also other incidents as well that old Wu had helped him out with before. Not to mention the most noteworthy incident in which Zhong Yi helped her take photos and the case of sending the wrong message in the first place. You couldn't consider something like that a superior subordinate relationship, can you? Of course not, but friends? It wasn't really so either, but looking back, their relationship was that of strangers either. He ate the kanji. The first mouthful of it was enough to make him want more, ah? Century egg and pork kanji? 
Ayo, this is too delicious. Preparing this kanji must have been a very troublesome task. Wu Zicheng said, just eat. Zhong Yi said while he ate, my novel, did you read it already? Yes. She sat beside him and nodded. Zhong Yi asked in anticipation, what do you think of it? He was very conscious of what Old Wu thought of it since the novel was mainly written because Old Wu said that she wanted to read a new novel of his. If Wu Zicheng did not like it, then his all of effort would have been in vain. This was why he really looked forward to hearing Old Wu's thoughts. Wu Zicheng did not answer him, but just looked at him and asked, this legend of Wukong was really written spontaneously. He said, yes. Wu Zicheng said, if I did not criticize you, then this novel would have never seen the light of day. Zhang Yi hesitated for a bit, thinking that it might have really been so, but coughed and said, no, but it was thanks to you that my inspiration just came and I started writing without stopping like I was possessed. After a pause, oh yes, you have not told me what you think of it yet. Do you think it's a good read? Wu Zicheng smiled and said, it's more than that. Although this unconstrained style of writing is considered as online literature, the level it has reached already far exceeds traditional literature. Haha, <laughs> looks like Big Sis has criticized you well and rightly. You are full of literary talent. If you don't show everyone what you've got, it would be such a pity. Do you know which line Big Sis liked the most? She said, I want for all sentient beings to be able to understand my intentions. When he heard that she liked it, he was naturally very happy, it's good as long as you like it. There are many feelings in your heart. Wu Ziqing said, if you just show everyone a little of it, the literary world will not be able to continue living in peace, even if it wanted to. Big Sis is looking forward to the development of the story in its later chapters. Without another word, Zhong Yi said, then. I will continue writing through the night. She gave a wave of her hand, that's enough. Enjoy your kanji and get some rest for tomorrow. Zhong Yi did not force it, sure, I will surely let you read it before you leave Beijing. I will definitely get it finished within three days. Wu Ziqing took the bowl of finished kanji and held it in her hand, okay, I will wait for it then. After saying that, she took the empty bowl and spoon and went downstairs with light footsteps. He looked at his watch. It was getting late. Zhong Yi blinked and blinked, thinking that it should be time for him to go home. It was already past 11 p.m. at night and it would be awkward for a man like him to stay over at a woman's place. But because Wu Ziqing did not say anything or made it seem like she wanted him to leave, Zhong Yi pretended he didn't notice and just went along with it. He did not mention it and intended to stay over to see if anything would arise. If Old Wu asked him to leave just before she slept, then he would go. If Old Wu didn't say a word, then Zhong Yi would just stay over, but, hum, he needed an excuse. He would just call it the fine sounding reason of staying up all night to write his novel. Suddenly, his cell phone rang. Zhong Yi, who was having crooked thoughts, got a bit of a scare from this. A thief would always have a guilty conscience. He checked his cell phone to see who was calling and answered, Old Yao, what's the matter? Yao Jinsai said, quickly publish the next chapter. Ah? You're talking about, Legend of Wukong? Zhong Yi was a little stunned, but he understood after a moment of thinking. He said happily, even you're reading my novel? This novel isn't meant for people your age. Yao Jinsai said in a depressed voice, I won't read that shitty novel of yours even if you gave it to me, but my Mimi likes it a lot and she's been begging me to ask you. My student wants to read it. Zhong Yi said, I was still thinking why someone like you, who has no class, would read it at all. Ha, huh, but I can't publish any more. I've stopped writing for the day. What about your stockpile? There's isn't any. I published whatever I've written. Don't give me that bullshit. Quick. Old Yao, I really don't have any more written for now. Why would I lie to you? Later, Zhong Yi's colleague also began calling him. Peking University's Chinese department teacher Su N.A., Teacher Su, you're still awake so late at night. How could I sleep? Teacher Zhong, you're really great. I saw your blog posting just before I went to bed, so I curiously had a glance and that was the start of the rabbit hole. I've stayed up throughout the night and finally finished reading all six chapters and was left wanting more. Please let me read the stockpile. Quickly. I really don't have a stockpile, Teacher Su. 
I don't believe you. We're colleagues, so if you won't let me read the stockpile today, then let's not keep in touch anymore. Hi, don't mind me, but you'll have to wait for tomorrow. I will write more tomorrow. My hands are already breaking. At least tell me the plot. I can't reveal that. You, we're not friends anymore. Heh, don't say that, don't say that. A few other friends called him as well. They mentioned words like a treat to a meal, smashing windows, and other threats or benefits which made Zhong Yi at, at a loss of whether to laugh or cry, but his mood was very good because of this as it meant that Legend of Wukong was a success and popular with readers. Chapter 505, Zhong Yi's Wondrous Way of Cooking Up Publicity There was nothing going on outside the study room. What was Old Wu doing now? Zhong Yi decided to go online to check out the reviews for his novel. Some commented that it wasn't good, while others said it was just SOSO, but most other reviews said that it was good and it seemed like the novel was also quite well received. The main reason for the negative reviews was that most of the readers could not understand it and thus did not want to continue reading on. Those that liked it could not wait for the next chapter to be released and even labeled it as a work of God. The click rates for a single chapter was around 600,000. The click counter on the blog was a little inaccurate as the 600,000 didn't mean all 600,000 people had read it. It included repeated clicks and also those who clicked on it by accident. This result might seem like it was quite good for most other people, as it showed that a lot of people read it, but for a literary figure of high standing like John Yi, this result was not considered good. It was at most an okay turnout. In the past, whenever he posted a poem, any poem, it would receive a few million views at the very least. The poem post would be forwarded countless times too, but this time, the reaction to the novel was rather flat. It did not cause any sensationalism and only a portion of his hardcore fans called it good. Many others probably did not know that he had published a new novel at all. This was a consequence of being banned. Zhong Yi had already anticipated this earlier. What should he do? He had to think of an idea. Such an excellent piece of work must not be ruined by his hands. It's fine even if he couldn't publish the novel or earn any money from it, but the amount of people who should read it mustn't be just a small handful like this. Since he had already published it online for free, he must surely try to gain as much reputation from it as possible. In this period of being banned, any reputation earned would surely be considered as very precious. He should definitely maximize his returns from it. In the discussion area. I'm extremely disappointed. What an insult to journey to the West. I've read a few chapters already, but I have no idea what it's talking about. A few comments caught Zhong Yi's attention. Those were the comments from several people from the literary world who had irreconcilable differences with him. People like Big Thunder and the Beijing Writers Association's Vice President Meng Dongwei. Zhong Yi had gone from the crawstalk circle and jumped back into the literary world. Because of that, this bunch of people surfaced again. When Zhong Yi saw their comments, he did not get angry. Instead, his eyes lit up as he thought of an idea. These people could be considered his old friends. Zhong Yi had battled with the literary world for so long that he had lost count of how many times they had battled. In the past, when this bunch of people appeared, they were always finding fault with him and attacking him stepping on him only to be slapped back hard on their mouths by Zhong Yi, but Zhong Yi was not preparing to do so today. Instead, he had decided that he would make the first move. He tapped on Meng Dongwei's Weibo and discovered that he had published a novel just last month. It was a fictional book called Wind in the Paddy Fields. The sales seemed to have done quite well. It's quite flavorful to read. Teacher Meng's new book is really a good read. Looking forward to Teacher Meng's new novel. Zhong Yi had not read this novel before and did not plan to, but he directly posted on Weibo, at Mengdongwa, Wind in the Paddy Fields? Why don't you call it Oil in the Gutter instead? What lousy novel is this? Ah. Zhong Yi posted on Weibo. What? Oil in the Gutter? Zhong Yi is attacking Mengdongwa's new novel? Zhong Yi's fans were shocked for a moment. Mengdongwa and his fans would not have any of this. They angrily called out, rolled up their sleeves, and went straight for Zhong Yi's Weibo. Zhong Yi! Who are you to question Teacher Meng? Have you even read A Wind in the Paddy Fields? Are you even qualified to criticize it? 
Do you think that your novel is any good? This is so numbing. You're the one who is gutter oil. Very quickly, Zhong Yi and Meng Dongwu's fans were crossing swords as well. However, the accused, Zhong Yi did not stay around. He went over to Big Thunder's Weibo and found out that he had posted a poem a while ago named, Are You Doing Well? And so, he posted his comment, at Big Thunder. What lousy poem is this? If it were anyone else who posted this, Big Thunder and his fans would not be angered. There were many people who liked to criticize others and not everyone could be forced to like something, but the person who was criticizing it was Zhong Yi, a celebrity. Thus, his fans immediately reacted. John Yi. You are going too far. Why are you scolding others out of the blue? Yet another wave of fans of Big Thunder were stirred. Next, John Yi went to famed fairy tale author, Little Red Mushroom's Weibo. He saw that she had just released a fairy tale collection of stories earlier today and there were posts that were promoting it. John Yi posted his comment, What lousy book is this? Little Red Mushroom was stupefied. She had been promoting her new collection of stories online when she saw Zhong Yi's comment. Her first reaction was something along the lines of, Damn it, Zhong Yi! I didn't step on your tail recently. It was all in the past, but now that you have nothing to do, you came to scold my new collection of fairy tales? This was bullying. Little Red Mushroom checked his Weibo and found out that he had written a new novel. After reading it a little, she angrily posted, that legend of Wukong of yours is the ridiculous one. And you even dare to come to my Weibo to scold my new book. You're a public figure, so you should watch your words. Everyone can see what you've written. Don't make yourself appear so tasteless. Then, Zhong Yi replied with another, what lousy book is this? Little Red Mushroom was so angered by this. He's such a big bully. What a big bully. She immediately gathered her fan club's members and went to Zhong Yi's Weibo for a scolding battle with them. Then, Zhong Yi had come to crosstalk actor Tang Dajang's Weibo and found a post that he linked to a previous crosstalk performance of his. He left a comment saying, What lousy crosstalk is this? Zhong Yi! That Zhong Yi is here. Damn! Asterisk 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 asterisk. The crosstalk competition was cancelled because of him. I'm so angry. And he still dares to come here to cause trouble now. Tang Dajang only found out about this when he got a call from a friend. He woke up in anger and switched on his computer to post a reply to Zhong Yi on Weibo. After a minute, Zhong Yi had arrived at Li Anson's verified Weibo account. Seeing how he had cowardly been hiding back in Korea to prepare his new album, Zhong Yi posted, What lousy song is this? Li Anson's fans would have none of this nonsense. F asterisk asterisk K. John Yi is here. Lousy song? Your sister. Ansonopa's new song hasn't even been released yet. How would you know if it is lousy or not? He's definitely picking a fight. Sisters. We must not let this slide. Let's go. We'll go to his Weibo to scold him. John Yi was looking for trouble everywhere. The funniest incident was with Lee Park Wu, who had an altercation with Zhong Yi before on Weibo. Seeing that he had been promoting his new movie, Zhong Yi gave a shout out over there as well. As he had been scolding the crosstalk actors earlier, like Tang Da Zhang, his disciples, and Xu Wenxiong, as well as the other crosstalk artists who had abused and scolded him before, when it came to Lee Park Wu's time to be scolded, Zhong Yi sent the wrong message. Zhong Yi, what lousy crosstalk is this? A lot of Zhong Yi's and Li Park Wu's fans were stunned. Zhong Yi panicked little, but did not feel embarrassed. He immediately changed his scolding and said, What lousy movie is this? At this moment, many of Zhong Yi's fans burst into laughter, pfft. Teacher Zhong Yi had been copy-pasting all his scoldings. He even sent it wrongly. Are those the only scolding words that will be used? Of course Li Park Wu's fans did not agree with the scolding. Zhong Yi was a famous person. He was even a famous person amongst famous people. If any other person scolded Li Park Wu, they wouldn't have been stirred at all since, if they were bothered, it would mean they acknowledged that person. But for Zhong Yi to be scolding, they couldn't take it sitting down. If they didn't say a word, wouldn't that mean that they were afraid of him? Yes. 
Zhang Yi, you're great at scolding people, have wit, and can scold others in all kinds of ways, but you can't bully us. When did we do anything to deserve your scolding? Parkuopa only said some words about you some time ago, but that was because of an incident. But now? Your scolding came out of the blue. Did you come here just to scold? This is so maddening. How dare you scold Parkuopa? You've already been banned yet you still try to cause trouble. Sisters. Let's get him. Scold him. In a short ten minutes or so. Zhong Yi had scolded many of the Crawstalk world and literary world members. He even scolded some of the celebrities who had altercations with him before. He scolded them using, what lousy, 20 is this, on their Weibo's. After that, Zhong Yi continued checking Weibo and found a few people that he had forgotten about. They were his old enemies that he had forgotten about and he did not let go of this chance to make up scoldings. Zhong Yi, at Renmin University Professor Ma Heng Yuan what lousy class is this? Zhong Yi, at Beijing Radio Station Deputy Station Head Jiu what lousy shirt is this? Deputy Station Head Jiu, who had already left his post, had recently posted a photo of himself wearing a suit and this had led to Zhong Yi nonsensically scolding him. Ma Heng Yuan was so angry that his moustache was displaced a little. Deputy Station Head Jiu also nearly vomited blood. Many of these people had already found out the hard way about Zhong Yi's vicious mouth and had not dared to provoke him anymore, but who would have expected him to come provoke them instead? Suddenly, Weibo was full of activity. Online, a mess ensued. Hundreds of celebrities, along their fans came to find the person responsible. Some of them publicly scolded Zhong Yi, while others privately messaged him. There were also those who posted a lot of messages to harass and cause inconvenience for him. The scolding battle did not only happen on Weibo, but also on Zhong Yi's fan club in Chieba. It was flooded by countless angry celebrities who had come to return the favor. The wrath of the celebrities. The wrath of their fans. Thousands and thousands of people had joined in to denounce Zhong Yi and he suddenly became the public enemy. Everyone was shouting to beat him up or to kill him. Zhong Yi, come out. You're too wicked. What gives you the right to scold our Ansonopa? How dare you scold Professor Ma? You're all teachers, so how can you act this way? Where is your bearing as a teacher? I'm so mad. This John Yi is truly hateful. He lacks virtues. This thing is really good at offending others. We need to get him off Weibo today. Who'd even want to read that lousy legend of Wukong of yours? Who would read it? The sacking force kept increasing as many people only saw Zhong Yi's latest updates that contained the phrases, what lousy book is this, what lousy movie is this, what lousy crawstalk is this, etc, etc, etc. Many of these posts were repeated but posted to different people. It seemed like he was doing a carpet bombing on Weibo. But no one had expected the reason why Zhong Yi was doing this. Zhong Yi's fans and friends who saw him jumping up and about, causing trouble everywhere were at a loss of whether to laugh or cry. The smarter ones could see that Zhong Yi was just trying to hype up his new novel release and trying to pull in as much attention as he could. But many people were only witnessing such AF asterisk asterisk king wondrous way of publicity for the first time in their lives. This was an act that lacked all virtue. Chapter 506, The Year's Greatest Scolding War Hello, Master Shu. Are you online? I'm about to sleep. It's already this late at night, what's the matter? Go and take a look quickly. John Yi's gone mad. He's looking for trouble everywhere. What matter of his would concern me? He, he scolded you as well. What? Hello, Teacher Chen. Who is this? I am Little Wang from the publishing firm. Oh, oh, I know who you are. Your new book has been scolded by Zhong Yi on Weibo. Ah? You son of a gun Zhong. How dare you try to bully me? The disturbance was large. He had caused too much ire. In the late hours of the night, countless celebrities who were turning in or had already gone to sleep were awoken by Zhong Yi's attacks. Many netizens also did not bother with sleeping anymore as the fans of those celebrities were making a fuss, as though they were on steroids. They rushed forward to curse at Zhong Yi, while those who were unaffected joined the war as bystanders, 
as it wasn't too much trouble since all they wanted was to observe what would ensue. Some of them even tried to muddy the waters and gave Zhong Yi's posts likes. Zhong Yi! Come out! Where is he? Is he running away after scolding others? This idiot is such a coward. How maddening. I've never been angered so much by a celebrity. Just how many teachers have you scolded in such a short span of time? Let's see how you are going to end up today. Ha ha, teacher Zhong is being so cute today. Supporting teacher Zhong Yi. I wonder what you all will do. Right. Supporting Zhong Yi. In the past, it was always teacher Zhong who released a work before getting harassed by those bunch of people who seemed to have something against him. They would scold and doubt him before denouncing him. Not once, not twice, not even thrice, but now the tables seem to have turned. Damn, based on what reason does it always have to be teacher Zhong getting scolded by you guys? This time, it's our turn to challenge you all. It would be impolite to not reciprocate. Is there a rule saying that only you people can scold teacher Zhong and he isn't allowed to do the same to you all? Right, well said. Like that Meng Dongwe, Deputy Station Head Jiao, Tang Dazhang, Li Anson, and those other literary and crosstalk world people who jumped at everything teacher Zhong did and endlessly repeated it. Now it's our turn. Everyone, let's do this. Support Zhong Yi. Brothers, let's attack. Let's scold that wretched Zhong Yi. The netizens sparred and fought with their words and the mess that followed was better left unsaid. Actually. Zhong Yi's cell phone would have been exploding with calls if it were not for the fact that he had been expecting it to happen and turned it off before he started scolding people on Weibo. He was enjoying the peace and quiet right now as he watched these people, whom he was scolding, react to him. Zhong Yi suddenly felt very satisfied. Just like how his fan had described, he had always been reactive in the past and fought back with his face smacking after being scolded, it has always been this way but now that he had been banned and had gained almost no attention for his new novel's release, Zhong Yi even felt a little bit lonely. So this time, he decided that he would actively seek the wrath of his old friends. Many of the celebrities who were scolded issued statements to accost Zhong Yi. A lot of critics and other people published their thoughts through various channels to strongly denounce Zhong Yi's act of aggression in scolding, so many people through Weibo. The battle was increasingly getting out of hand and more and more people were gathered to witness this unprecedented Weibo war. The number of times Zhong Yi's Weibo post and comments were forwarded was exploding and headed straight for the top on Weibo's ranking page. Other forums and Thai Bass were also full of criticism for Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi's blog was naturally one of the battlegrounds in this war. It was at this time that the click rate for Legend of Wukong began rising at an unbelievable speed. It rose so quickly that it would s. Hock you just to see it. Every time the page was refreshed, the click rate for those six chapters would rise by a large number again. 1 million. 1.5 million. 2.3 million. That rate of increase blinded the eyes of many observers. Ah, this novel's really good. I accidentally clicked on it and read it, but it's quite good. I came to watch the scolding war wondering what was going on, but ended up seeing Legend of Wukong and reading it. I couldn't even stop once I started. What a great I want for the sky to not cover my eyes. Aside from Zhong Yi's character, which I do not want to comment on, his literary level really leaves people speechless. It can only be described as amazing. Good read. Stop scolding people and quickly update the novel instead. Zhong Yi, stop scolding people. Come back and publish your next chapter. I want to read on to find out. Most of these people did not know about Zhong Yi's new novel until the scolding incident happened and caught their attention. The popularity of the novel suddenly surged. 3 million. 3.5 million. It was still rising. This scene had left many people dumbfounded. The novel had only just been published earlier that night and wasn't even completed. There were only six chapters and only how many hours had passed since then. The number of times it was read shocked many of them. Then some of them analyzed the numbers and felt that if Zhong Yi had not been banned previously, he would still have been unable to get so many views in such a short period of time, but now that he was banned, how the heck did he get this many views? 
There were no reports of it on the news, no media promotions, and no direct promotions and it still managed to reach such heaven-defying readership. Quite a number of people from the other side of the war finally understood. Everyone, stop scolding already. Don't go on to Zhong Yi's Weibo or blog. Damn. Zhong Yi's making use of us to hype up his new novel. We've been tricked. We must all ignore Zhong Yi. We are helping to raise his popularity right now. Suddenly, a lot of these detractors reacted and responded to the call and Zhong Yi's blog became quiet for a few seconds. But the next moment, Zhong Yi had appeared again on the literary and crosstalk world members Weibo and blog and repeated his previous scoldings. Zhong Yi, at Mengdongwa what lousy book is this? What lousy book is this? What lousy book is this? Zhong Yi, at Tangdazhan what lousy crosstalk is this? What lousy crosstalk is this? What lousy crosstalk is this? It was still the same words, only repeated several times in each post. It had appeared on Meng Dongwei and the other people's Weibo. These celebrities, who had been scolded, nearly vomited blood. Holy sure asterisk T. Zhong Yi. I will fight it out with you. Even though they knew that Zhong Yi was doing this on purpose, they still did not take it lying down. This was really too maddening. Ignore him? Don't respond to his provocations and leave him frustrated? But they couldn't. Zhong Yi was jumping around scolding them, if they chose not to respond, they would be overwhelmed by his aggression. They would be scolded to death by him. Then those netizens who did not know of Zhong Yi's intentions would think that they were afraid of Zhong Yi. Fight back. They had to fight back. Right then, another wave of scolding battle began again. Zhong Yi! You bastard! How can you be so wicked? This bastard is really annoying and making me clench my teeth. The fans of these celebrities could actually be considered as Zhong Yi's old friends as well. Back when Zhong Yi had clashed with their idols, these fans often came along to join in the ensuing arguments as well. They already got to know each other rather well by now since it wasn't their first time crossing swords. The only difference was that all of the different celebrities' fans were now attacking Zhong Yi together at once. It was a grand scene. An overwhelming amount of netizens had now gathered at Zhong Yi's Weibo and Chiba and used it as the battlegrounds to begin the Great War. Zhong Yi's fans were also very supportive and they went for the Weibo accounts of Meng Dongwei, Tang Da Zhang, and the others and posted the same comments as Zhong Yi. What lousy book is this? What lousy song is this? What lousy crosstalk is this? The battle was fierce as the two forces clashed. Sometimes, it was even hard to tell who was on whose side. The observers and neutral parties still numbered the most as they watched on during this earth-shattering scolding war. With every scolding comment posted, they were overjoyed. If it were other celebrities who attacked others like this without reason, most people would definitely feel uncomfortable about it. But it was Zhong Yi who was doing the scolding now and he even recycled the scolding phrases on all of his victims. Somehow, everyone did not have negative feelings about this but were instead tickled by what they were seeing. Zhong Yi has never been known to be a serious celebrity. He had hosted a talk show before and even performed crosstalk in the past few days. As he was a very funny crosstalk actor, everyone would change their mental image of him whenever they see him talking. They would not take the things he said as too serious. How funny. Zhong Yi's really cute. Ha ha ha, teacher Zhong is such a tease. Using such a way to gain popularity, I've never even heard that there was such a way to do this. Ha 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 ha. Some of Zhong Yi's friends also posted on Weibo. Su Na, Pfut, teacher Zhong. Don't make trouble anymore. Dong Shan Shan, a Zhongyi old classmate, it's time for your medication. Grandma Zhong Xia. Zhong Yuanchi's agent Fang Wei Hong, just passing by, it wouldn't affect me to just watch. It was needless to say how busy the Heavenly Queen's manager was. The duties of the manager were probably more packed than the artist that she managed. But now, even the top manager Fang Wei Hong had appeared on Weibo. So that must say how much of a sensation this big encompassing scolding war had caused. Not only did it interest the netizens, even many of those industry insiders' attentions were captured. But thinking it through, whether it was Li Anson, Li Park Wu, Tang Da Zhang, Xu Wenxiong or any of the others, which one of them were not well known? 
which one of them did not have a large number of fans defending them. When the old and new hatred combined together from Zhong Yi scolding, it was as good as poking the hornet's nest. Suddenly, a small situation happened. On Central TV Sports Channel, a live European football match was currently being broadcasted. When the pre-match was just beginning and the footballers were doing their warm-ups, countless football fans were watching the game. In the broadcast studio, the host was discussing about netters and comments with the in-studio pundits and commentators about which team had more support. But an unexpected situation occurred, possibly due to an operation error backstage. The website that was being shown on the live broadcast had displayed John Yi's blog instead and Legend of Wukong was shown on screen. It was showing the comment section where the scolding battle was occurring and the feed lasted for about six to seven seconds. Ah, uh, our apologies to everyone. We had some technical difficulties just now. The host and guests quickly switched topics and moved on. But with that slight distraction, countless of others had taken note of Legend of Wukong. Shown the wrong feed? Pfft. Central TV. It's Central TV again. What kind of a relationship does Central TV have with Teacher Zhong? They're taking such good care of Teacher Zhong. Zhong Yi only knew about this incident when he saw a screenshot of it posted by a netizen. He knew clearly that this was surely the effect of the five times reduced difficulty. It was all thanks to the difficulty adjustment die. Whatever help he needed, it would come. It repeatedly committed meritorious deeds for him. Chapter 507 in the study room. It was almost midnight. Unlike the chaotic scene online, it was very quiet and peaceful in the room. Zhong Yi was smoking a cigarette while drinking his coffee, relaxingly copying and pasting the scolding text with his mouse and keyboard. He continued in his search for more targets. As long as it was someone who had ever stepped on him when he was down, he would target them and not leave a single one untouched. A moment later. Sorry, your posting rights have been revoked. Sorry, your posting rights have been revoked. Finally, Zhong Yi tried another two more times without success. When he checked out why this was happening, he found out that he had been reported by a total of 13,000 users. In a short 30 minutes, he had actually been reported by more than 10,000 people. He probably broke the record for receiving the most amount of complaints since the launch of Weibo. In the past, even for those extremely hated internet stars, celebrities, or businessmen, no one had ever concurrently received so many complaints against them before. The year's first large-scale scolding war had precisely led to such a record being broken. It was undoubtedly a rare moment. Are you crazy? Did you have your medication? How much did you eat? How much did you have? I will eat however much you have. I have enough for however much you can eat. The scolding battle was still ongoing as the netizens came up with all sorts of ways to scold. Especially for Zhong Yi's fans, they've had much training, having been through so many battles with Zhong Yi in the past. With his influence, their scoldings were fanciful and not ambiguous at all. This left many people bursting with laughter. Ayo, hey this is too funny. This scolding battle is so enjoyable to watch. Ha ha ha, Zhong Yi has already become public enemy number one. He creates trouble whenever he appears and it's no exception this time. This hyping up is too powerful. This way of getting attention is really not something that just anyone can come up with. Even if they could, it would take more than an extraordinary person to carry it out. Only a wonder of the entertainment industry like teacher Zhong Yi has the guts to do something like this. He even executed the whole plan perfectly. Pfft. I've just about fainted from laughing too much in front of my computer. Honestly speaking, I am liking Zhong Yi more and more. Other people usually hype up their promotions discreetly by having rumors of relationships, or claiming to have certain incidents happening to them. When they are called out for trying to do promotions with such news, they just deny it and appear to be righteous, but look at teacher Zhong Yi. He's just doing all of it openly. He's basically telling everyone straight up, I am promoting my novel. I am creating all this trouble to do my promotions. Ha ha, he's totally different from your everyday celebrity. This is the first time I've witnessed hyping up a release in such an honest way. And those artists who have a grudge with teacher Zhong can only take it quietly. It's really an extraordinary task that could be accomplished by an extraordinary person. 
In the 50 years of entertainment business, only Zhong Yi could have carried out an act that lacks as much virtue as this. Zhong Yi has a very special kind of charm that just attracts you to him. That is what I like most about him, he is never pretentious. He just says everything as it is. Everyone was going to sleep soon and so the scolding battle was also coming to a close. Many of the netizens were already posting their conclusions of the incident today. What was unexpected was that many of them actually had very positive opinions of Zhong Yi's troublemaking this time. This nearly made the celebrities who were scolded and their fans faint. Zhong Yi was once again the talk of the town. And the new novel, Legend of Wukong, had also gone viral. Past midnight. As the people online starting to thin out, the scolding war also died together with it. The netizens who had to sleep had gone to sleep. This kind of meaningless war would usually come and go very quickly. The victors and losers were generally undecided and all that mattered was the process of scolding. It was just a way to get a kick from it and then, there's no and then. A voice called out to him from outside the room. Little Zhong. Oh, Sis Wu. Are you busy? Come here for a while. Okay, okay. Zhong Yi did not bother about the scolding war anymore. He turned off his computer and looked at his watch only to realize that it was quite late already. He quickly opened the door and went outside, but did not find anyone in the corridor. He walked out a few steps to a room where the door was open. He could see the Wu Ziqing inside and she was just laying her bed out with a blanket. When she saw him, Wu Ziqing patted on the bed sheets and said, I've laid out the bed for you. It's already this late, so you don't have to go back tonight. You can just stay over. Zhong Yi hypocritically said, come on, I think it's better for me to just head back. She pointed at her watch and said, it's rather late now and it's not safe to drive back at this time. Then, all right. I guess I will have to bother you again. Zhong Yi was of course more than hoping that this would happen. His intentions were to stay over anyway. The last time he stayed over in this house was due to him having drunk too much at the Calligraphy Association's anniversary celebrations. Wu Ziqing pointed to the bathroom, the toothbrush and towel in there were the ones you used previously. I've not touched them. Oh yes, what would you like for breakfast tomorrow? It's okay, please don't trouble yourself with that. Just busy yourself with what you need to. Zhong Yi waved his hand. She smiled and said, Big Sis is having a break from work these few days, so there's nothing to keep me busy with. I will just fix something up for breakfast then. Are you sleepy yet? If you are, you should just go to bed earlier. Zhong Yi blinked, I'm not feeling sleepy yet. You're still not tired at this late hour? Wu Ziqing asked. He smiled and said, I've been sleeping quite late these past few days and don't go to bed before 1 or 2 a.m. Chapter 508, Confessing to Old Wu When he opened his eyes, it was already morning. The sky was still dark outside, as it was just past six in the morning. Outside the window, he could see a few old men and women doing their morning exercises. Other than them, there wasn't anyone else. This was an upscale estate, and there were not that many residents. Zhong Yi crawled out of the guest bed in old Wu's house. He yawned and stretched since he was unable to go back to sleep. He still felt a little uncomfortable spending the night at someone else's place since he wasn't used to the bed and couldn't get comfortable. He went to the bathroom to do his business and then washed up. When he left his room, he moved around with light footsteps and took a look around. There wasn't anything going on upstairs or downstairs. Old Wu was clearly still in bed and if he judged by the standard seven or eight hours of sleep, Sis Wu would probably only be up around 8 a.m. John Yi quietly made some tea on the first floor and brought it back into the room. He wasn't going back to sleep anymore, so he turned on the computer on the table. He continued with his novel. Legend of Wukong. Chapter 7, Tang Xuanzang went back to the small room. The fish was still swimming in the tank. Why is the ground so wet? You must have been naughty again. Xuanzang smiled and said to Little White Dragon. Little White Dragon swung her tail about and smiled. She found out that she was even willing to become a fish if it meant that she could stay by his side. When he was writing this novel yesterday, Zhong Yi had some hope of things turning out better. He had earlier felt that his future was uncertain as everything he did was only bogged down by the ban. 
he was also no longer a small-time celebrity, but a well-known celebrity who was now ranked in the middle of the C-list rankings. A star of his caliber would require a lot of fame and popularity just to maintain this level, because his competitors in the rankings were not dead people. It wasn't only his popularity which would grow, but all of the others would grow as well. They were all running the rat race together and that was the reason why Zhong Yi couldn't just stay where he was. The rankings would change and he might drop greatly in ranking if he did not do something. Zhong Yi was now trying to think of a way to maintain his spot and was given a glimmer of hope by the novel Legend of Wukong. He did not ask for it to be able to push him further up the rankings, but just to allow him to maintain his visibility and reputation so that his ranking would not drop. From what he could see right now, his goals had already been reached. In fact, it even exceeded his expectations. The epic scolding war last night helped push Legend of Wukong into a prominent view and popular position. If he needed to come up with a reason for writing this novel yesterday, it was because of Wu Ziqing, but today, he, Zhong Yi, was writing this for himself. Tap tap tap. The clicking sound of the keyboard kept sounding out wave after wave. His writing form was just normal since he had only just woken up. This chapter was written at a slower pace than yesterday, but he still managed to stumble through and complete the chapter. Zhong Yi checked for any typos before publishing it on his blog immediately. Some netizens, who were up early, were already waiting. Ah. It's released, it's released. I've refreshed so many times. It's finally here. Ha ha, the wait is killing me. I better read it first. I've just finished reading it. It was great. Really good. Is there any more, Teacher Zhong? Please release it all at once. I'm so anxious to find out what's going to happen next. The scolding war had already died down and the comment section on Zhong Yi's blog was in a mess. It could still be seen how fierce the battle had been the night before with some people still randomly continuing to scold but since it was just scattered scoldings, it could be said that the scolding war had already ended. The only people left were the ones who were standing by at his blog waiting for the updates to Legend of Wukong. Some even said, damn, I won't even bother celebrating Valentine's Day today. I will just wait at home for your updates. Oh. Valentine's Day? When he saw that comment, Zhong Yi was a little stunned. He took out his cell phone and checked the calendar to confirm. Well, isn't this so? Lunar New Year had just passed and it was already February 14th today. Spring was already coming. But after knowing, he did not have much of a reaction anymore and just continued to power through writing the eighth chapter. To a very nationalistic youth amongst nationalistic youths, Zhong Yi wouldn't possibly want to celebrate this foreign festival. It would have been better to just celebrate their own traditional Chinese Valentine's Day. A thousand characters. 2,000 characters. The eighth chapter was also completed. Zhong Yi had found his form and momentum by now, so the speed of his typing gradually increased. After he published it, he was preparing to get some rest, as his wrist was getting a little achy. Having typed out so many characters last night, he did not feel the effects immediately after, but when he woke up from his sleep, he did not feel too well in his head and hands. Together with helping Wu Ziqing take so many pictures of herself, coupled with those postures and angles, as well as pressing the shutter so many times, all of these were enough to cause him to feel tired. He opened the windows and took a deep breath. It was already past 7 a.m. now. The sky was gradually becoming brighter, but the sun was still not up yet. The land was recovering and the little trees were sprouting buds. It was a vibrant and lively scene from the window. There was a sound outside the door along the corridor. It was the voice of a woman, little Zhong. Zhong Yi turned back to face the door and said, Sis Wu, I'm in here. He closed the windows and quickly went over to open the door, but when he was just a meter away from the door, the door had already opened. Wu Ziqing appeared in front of him. He could see that Wu Ziqing had only just woken up as her hair was still a little messy. Zhong Yi smiled, you're awake? I just opened my eyes a while ago. I said I wanted to prepare breakfast for you, but then I couldn't find you in the bedroom. Haha, <laughs> why did you come to the study? She asked. Zhong Yi said, I just finished writing two more chapters of the novel. Wu Ziqing said, you are working on it so early in the morning. 
Zhong Yi nodded, I woke up early today and couldn't go back to sleep. All right then. You can continue to write while I prepare breakfast. You must be hungry? Wu Ziqing laughed a little, it will take about ten minutes and breakfast will be served. I won't be writing any more for now. Let's go downstairs together. Zhong Yi followed behind her and out of the study room. When he passed by the room that he had slept in, Zhong Yi was stunned, Ayo, why did you fix the bed for me? Sigh, I forgot to make my own bed after waking up. The blankets and pillows were all stacked nicely on the bed, and even the coffee cup and ashtray, that he had been using last night, were taken away and cleaned up by old Wu. Zhong Yi felt quite embarrassed about it as he was already troubling someone by staying over, and now old Wu even had to clean up after him. Wu Ziqing ignored him and just walked down the stairs. Zhong Yi looked at her from behind and was feeling her gentleness and warmth. He mustered up a few words and the courage to say it, but always faltered just before the words could come out from his mouth. Instead, his face turned red from this. Just because he dared to scold at anyone didn't mean that he could say what he wanted to say to a woman, especially when it was such a beautiful woman. He tended to speak more formally with her. He had a lot of words that he had wanted to say last night when he had been photographing old Wu, but now, he could not even open his mouth. There weren't too many days left of the reduced difficulty period. Only three days of the total duration of slightly more than six days were left now, and he had to make use of this time to confess to old Wu. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a chance in the future. How big of a gulf was between the two of them? It wouldn't be too exaggerated to say that a day and a continent separated the two of them. Old Wu was successful in her career and already at a high place at 30-something, but him? He may look like he was doing well on the outside, but actually his career had only just started. Old Wu was blessed with good looks and was beautiful from head to toe and from inside out, but him? He was just ordinary, and you couldn't even consider him to be a little bit handsome. Old Wu's personality was good as well. She knew how to take care of others, respect others, and was basically very considerate in all aspects, but him? He would create trouble every day, offending people everywhere. He could not cook or take care of people and was lazy. Sigh, let's just stop here. The more reasons he brought up, the more likely he would burst into tears. Shall I make some eggs? Anything is fine. Okay, I will heat up some milk too. Downstairs, Wu Ziqing was beginning to busy herself with chores. Zhong Yi could not help in any way, so he just stood by her side and looked on. He had been thinking over and over again on how to confess. Should he do it gracefully? Boldly? Frankly? A cell phone rang. It was old Wu's cell phone. She checked the caller ID and smiled as she picked up, Director Wang. Zhong Yi leaned in closer and managed to overhear a bit of the conversation. It was a man, who sounded like he was in his thirties, not too young or old, President Wu, I heard that you were promoted. She answered, it's just a lateral promotion. The other party said, where will you be headed? She replied, to the south, I guess. It still hasn't been confirmed yet. The other party paused for a moment before saying, it's Valentine's Day today, are you free? Let me give you a treat. Zhong Yi's ears perked up up immediately. Damn you, who the hell does this Wang guy think he is? How dare you try to cut this bro's corner? But he heard Wu Ziqing laughing and reply, next time, I have something going on today. That person said, you have a date? She replied, haha, it's not really a date, but I won't be able to go for sure. We can always have the farewell dinner another day. It would be the same anyway. We can also call a few of our old friends along for the gathering before I leave. That person could only reply, all right then. After hanging up, the doorbell rang. A man's voice shouted out from the outside, courier. Wu Ziqing went to open the door. When the courier saw Wu Ziqing, he gave a look of amazement and was stunned for a moment. Then he said, are you Madam Wu? I have a parcel for you, please sign here. Oh, thank you. Wu Ziqing signed off on the acknowledgement slip and opened up the parcel. It was a big box of chocolates from abroad in the shape of hearts. One could tell that it was expensive just from the look of it alone. When the courier left, someone from the florist arrived with two big bouquets of flowers. One of it was red, while the other one was blue in color. 
the florist delivery person asked Wu Zuching to sign for the delivery. Wu Zuching's expression did not change and she asked, they're both for me. The female florist delivery person replied, yes, they're both for you. We received these two orders yesterday and only noticed it today when we were preparing to send out the flowers. The addresses were the same, so we brought them over together. Ahem, this one is is from Mr. Zhong and this one is from Mr. Liu. Can you sign both acknowledgement slips? It wasn't really that coincidental, since the florist was one of the bigger shops in the vicinity of Dauran Pavilion. It was also more popular and so the two orders were made at this shop via a website. The florist delivery person was still wondering earlier about this. It was a rare occurrence even to them, but when she saw Wu Zuching, she seemed to have realized that it wasn't that much of a surprise at all. For such a beautiful woman, if she wasn't married yet, it wouldn't even be surprising if she received more than a dozen flowers, let alone just two bouquets. After Wu Zuching signed it, she said, thank you. Zhong Yi, who had been observing this from the side, was now feeling hatred for those gift senders. He had wanted to scold all of them harshly. This was really pushing it too far. You people have pushed it too far. The confession has to be today. It had to be. If he didn't, then old Wu might be snatched away by someone else instead. Chapter 509, I'm willing to become the stone bridge for 500 years. In the villa. Wu Zuching put the flowers on a table. Zhong Yi went up to it, let me help you with these, where do you want me to place them? Wu Zuching said, it's fine. Let's have our breakfast first. If there's no place to put them, then just leave them there or put it out in the garden. Zhong Yi blinked, you are so popular. They are just gifts from some friends and ex-colleagues. She answered. Zhong Yi asked, oh, they are all wooing you? Wu Zuching brought the milk over and calmly responded, I don't know about that. Come on, even a fool could see that. How could you not? When Zhong Yi heard this, he started to talk badly about them and said, Say, don't you think a foreign festival like that really spoils the atmosphere here? What's so good about celebrating a day like Valentine's Day anyway? Just sit down and eat. Wu Zuching smiled, Big Sis doesn't celebrate Western festivals like this either. Zhong Yi lightly slapped his hand on the table, right? Things like chocolates and flowers are totally undesirable gifts. We should firmly reject such practices. Just look at Thanksgiving Day last year, where so many of our Chinese nationals were fussing over celebrating it. Even some public figures went about posting on Weibo about what they were thankful for. What are they even thinking? How did the American festival of Thanksgiving come about? It was because they wanted to thank the Indians for helping them before and so this day was designated as Thanksgiving Day. Who is our country giving thanks to then? It is totally mindless to celebrate it. Wu Zuching was already laughing, you seem pretty agitated. It's not that I want to step on them, it's really not like that, sis Wu. Zhong Yi was in fact bashing them using this opportunity, such undesirable practices are really making me unable to just look on anymore. Wu Zuching nodded her head slight, they shouldn't be promoted. During the duration of breakfast, Zhong Yi kept talking about and putting down these people with everything he got. He was not done until he had buried these people deep into the mud. After breakfast, yet another courier had arrived to send a package. After signing for it, Wu Zuching took it out and saw that it was a calligraphic scroll with a poem written in it. You are the beautiful Chang'e of the mortal world. Are the song and dance a reflection of your heart? The wind I ride on while you steer our direction. Most beautiful of all is not how the clouds float past. Love so deep, you won't need much of those. Zhong Yi knew at a glance what it was, an acrostic poem? The characters in front formed the sentence, you are the most loved? Bah! How disgustingly vulgar! This was simply too disgustingly vulgar. Zhong Yi was already despising the sender completely and forming opinions of that person. Wu Zuching could only laugh lightly and shake her head. She did not say anything else, but just kept the calligraphic scroll aside. Zhong Yi continued his bashing, is that from someone in the calligraphy association? The words are just all right, but the standard of this poem is, very normal. It's just a matter of putting it together properly and that doesn't require much skill. D.I.D.I. Wu Zuching's cell phone received a message and she picked it up to take a look. Zhong Yi stole a glance, but did not manage to see clearly. 
based on the layout of the words, it was probably yet another poem. It seemed like everyone knew that Wu Ziqing liked calligraphy and poems a lot and they were aiming to please her on this Valentine's Day, hoping to win her over. Old Wu passed the phone over and asked, what does this poem mean? I don't understand it. Oh, let me help you with it. Since this was Zhong Yi's rice bowl, he did not say another word but took the phone and read from it. He said, it's another acrostic poem, but this one is a little deeper. Wu Ziqing said, acrostic. Zhong Yi nodded and read, a bit of melancholy over long days and short nights, from high few ever come, the moon. One person to cruise the green plains, ten soldiers with their feet growing clothes, represents. The swan spreads its wings, gone is its flight, meaningless to enjoy wine with a white ladle, my, nothing with a hook and three dots of rain, heart. Using the Chinese characters and the clues in the text, they formed, the moon represents my heart. Such poems with hidden words or meanings were not a serious kind of literature. Sometimes to make it work, it would have to be forced. The sentences would then become flawed and it was understandable that Old Wu did not catch the meaning of it. This sort of poems was very common in Zhong Yi's previous world, so he knew the meanings behind them almost immediately after reading it. Wu Ziqing laughed, you seem to be quite well versed in this field. Zhong Yi sighed, well, I dare not claim that I am well versed in such things. These kinds of poems are just simple tricks and can't be considered a skill. I've never really learned in depth about them, but I think that I do know it better than them. He had again stepped on old Wu's pursuers. Even this bro has not dared to make his move yet, but all of you are already confessing one by one? Shameless. Do you all still have a shred of humanity left in you? Zhong Yi was very angry and worried. Seeing old Wu's calm demeanor, she probably had to sign for these things every year. There were probably more than ten people trying to woo her at any given time, and that was already a conservative estimate. Old Wu was already in her thirties and was not married and had no children yet. From this reasoning, her family was probably already urging her to do so? Old Wu might also be a little worried because of this? A situation like this made it even more critical. If she were to loosen up a little, she might just end up with someone else after hearing their sweet words and promises. Then Zhong Yi would definitely end up heartbroken and crying. This was the main reason why he was also feeling very worried. Old Wu went to get a vase. Zhong Yi followed along and helped her arrange the flowers. He tested her by asking, Sis Wu, there are so many people wooing you, but it seems like none of them have caught your eye. Wu Ziqing replied, They are not wooing me. They're all just friends and teasing me for fun. You, don't you plan to have a family? Zhong Yi ventured a little more and asked. Wu Ziqing looked at him, why are you asking about this? Zhong Yi smiled, sigh, I'm just curious. Just curious. She replied anyway, of course I would like to have a family, but I have not met the right person yet. Ha ha. Why? Do you have someone in mind to introduce to me? Ahem, no. Zhong Yi replied. She said, all right, the flowers have been arranged properly. Zhong Yi said, hum. She had already walked in front of him, let's go. Let's go upstairs to take a look at your newly published chapter. I'm looking forward to read it. Sure. Zhong Yi followed along, if you still want to read more after you finish this chapter, I will continue to write. I can try to rush out six more chapters today. Upstairs. Old Wu's room. Wu Ziqing switched on her computer and sat down. She launched the browser while Zhong Yi pulled a chair over and sat down. His heart was very unsettled right now. Old Wu logged onto Weibo first and said, There's so much activity on here today. Zhong Yi had a look and felt the same. The internet today was filled with proposals between couples and confessions from secret admirers. There were even some celebrities who were showing their love and affections to others. There was surely a lot of gossip about them while at least two public figures had already been photographed with another mysterious man, or woman out on a Valentine's Day date. Wu Ziqing's Weibo was also having quite a commotion. As old Wu was not considered a public figure, she did not have many fans paying attention to her. It was inconspicuous, but Zhong Yi was following her. When he saw many people doing acrostic poems on her Weibo, he was infuriated. A Weibo verified account of a certain higher mathematics teacher from Peking University, 
Panhenian also posted on her Weibo with a message. He had also dedicated a poem to a Wuzaching. Leaning on a window I long for a beauty. Blissful rain and overflowing wine string bead curtains. Merry dances wave to the elegant figure. Your smile appears like a flower fairy. From the top parts of the Chinese characters, it meant, I like you. Regarding these messages, the common netizens were not too interested in them, but Wu Zixing's friends and students of Peking University were. They had all gathered at her Weibo page to see what was going on. A female student exclaimed, Wow! Teacher Han has confessed. A physics department associate professor also teasingly gave his blessings, wishing little Han gets to win the maiden's hand. Work hard for it. John Yi's co colleague, Chinese department Su Na also joined in the fun, he he, teacher Han's courage is admirable. Here's a like for you. I heard that President Wu will be posted to another place soon, so you had better work hard to win her over. The students of Peking University were also shouting all sorts of replies. Ah, President Wu is mine. Foot, previous poster must be crazy. Your balls must be really big. Wu Wu, I like President Wu as well. When I graduate and find a job, and if President Wu is still unmarried at that time, I will definitely woo her. Even if I know that President Wu will not have eyes for me, I will still go for it. Cries. President Wu is my goddess. I've also been secretly in love with President Wu for the past three years. President Wu, I love you too. Forget it you guys. At our age, it is definitely not possible. Yeah. Honestly speaking, teacher Han Henian, who teaches higher mathematics is more suitable for her. At least they are similar in terms of age and teacher Han is rather suave looking as well. I never expected a math teacher like teacher Han to have such good literary talent. It's an acrostic poem. Get together. Get together. Get together. Some male students cried out in jealousy, while others were shouting their blessings and wishes for the two. President Wu is too popular. Yes, just look at how many people are confessing to her. Another Weibo verified member of the National Writers Association, a middle-aged man, had also transmitted his love for Wu Zixing. That person who was considered to be rather well-known and worked in literature research probably knew Wu Zixing in person as well since they might have crossed paths in their work before. He was a divorcee and had a child from his previous marriage. He posted a poem to Wu Zixing, the trees open their eyes. A kidnaps under his roof. Lacking in conscience. Sunset with remnant rabbits by the side. It was acrostic also. The few words represented, regret that we didn't meet sooner. This middle-aged man from the Writers' Association was still holding back and being a little more subtle than the others. He was already at an age where he wouldn't feel comfortable with expressing those mushy love confessions in public. This was evident in his poem too as it was just a simple hint that still managed to express his admiration of her. When this poem was published, some other admirers were probably getting anxious by the slew of confessions to Wu Zixing. They knew they could not longer just sit back, so all of them also joined in to make their confessions. Because old Wu was also part of these circles, having worked in publicity, education, Peking University's Chinese department, and was also a member of the Calligraphy Association, the people she knew and mingled with were also part of these circles. These people might not be good at most other things, but coming up with a simple poem was definitely not one of them. There was poetry everywhere. A thread of feelings lead to a head of white. Daily longing expels grief. Don't blame me for my seeds of infatuation. Seeing you often in my dreams. If we were fated. The distance that keeps us apart is just a thread. The cherry blossoms bloom in March. Fruits after autumn is most sweet. The same old acrostic poems, one day apart seems like three years. One after the other, wave after wave. There were too many people who were confessing to Wu Zixing. It felt like they were kicking up a riot, each trying to outdo the other to see who could win the dame's heart. What's going on here today? Wow, they are all here trying to woo President Wu. I wonder who President Wu will choose. Looking forward to it. I'm getting interested in this too. Sis Wu, pick one of them. He he, you aren't young anymore. The going ONS were sustaining the attention of the students and old Wu's friends. 
At home. Wu Ziqing only smiled and shook her head. Zhang Yi was looking at her Weibo all this while beside her. He was somewhat angry and frustrated and finally couldn't hold it in anymore, Sis Wu. Yes? She tilted her head sidewards. Zhang Yi muttered some words, so then, let's, you. Wu Ziqing gently said, just say what you want to say. What's the matter? Zhang Yi clenched his teeth, thinking that if he didn't say anything now, then he would probably not have another chance in this lifetime to say it. By the power of the five times difficulty reduction die. Bestow unto me the courage to do this. Zhang Yi took a deep breath and did not beat around the bush any longer. He looked at Wu Ziqing in the eye and said, don't bother with them. Why don't you be my girlfriend instead? What the heck? He finally said it. When the words slipped out of his mouth, Zhang Yi no longer felt nervous. He wore a serious expression on his face. But Wu Ziqing only laughed it off, you are just like them, teasing me. Zhang Yi said seriously with a blushed face, hey, what do you mean teasing? I am being very serious, sis Wu. Wu Ziqing smiled, I don't see it. Zhang Yi let himself loose, just tell me if you want to or don't want to. You like me? She looked into Zhang Yi's eyes. Zhang Yi said without hesitation, yes. Wu Ziqing calmly said, Big Sis will be leaving for her new post soon. This time, it will be to the south and the workload will surely become heavier. I probably won't be able to come even once a year. Zhang Yi immediately said, I don't care if we can see each other or not. Besides that, I could go over to look for you too. A flight there wouldn't take long at all. Moreover, even if you don't come back for a year or five years, I will still wait for you. Distance is not a problem. Sis Wu, I am being quite serious here. She asked, what do you like about me? Zhang Yi said, there's no reason why, I just do. She asked again, how much do you like me? Just thinking about Wu Ziqing's gentleness and caring side, thinking about how she treated him with so much respect and gave him unconditional support, he wouldn't be able to find a girlfriend like this even in eight lifetimes. So why did he like her that much, was that even a question? When the images of those pursuers of old Wu composing poems to confess floated across his mind, Zhang Yi's expression began to calm down slowly. Like? How much do I like you? Zhang Yi looked at her and lightly recited a Zen verse that did not exist in this world, I'm willing to become the stone bridge. Enduring 500 years of the ruthless wind. 500 years of the burning Sunday. 500 years of the freezing rain. Just, to catch a glimpse of you passing by. How much do I like you? I guess it is as much as that. When this famous, verse of the stone bridge, was spoken, Wu Ziqing's eyes immediately changed. She was stunned. Five hundred years in the ruthless wind? Five hundred years under the burning sun? Five hundred years of being, beaten by the rain? Compared to those acrostic poems that old Wu's pursuers had used to confess with, Zhang Yi's verse of the stone bridge was on a much higher level than theirs. It was already in a different class. Not only was the content and literary standard on a different level, even its meaning and power were incomparable. There were no sweet words in it. There were no promises either. But the emotions in the Zen verse were much more meaningful and amazing than anything those confessions could express with words. 500 years of suffering, just to catch a glimpse of you passing by? Wu Ziqing closed her eyes and opened them again, asking, are you serious? Zhang Yi said, I've never been more serious than I am today. After a few seconds of silence, Wu Ziqing simply said, okay. Okay? Zhang Yi was stunned, what do you mean? Wu Ziqing smiled at him, weren't you asking Big Sis to be your girlfriend? So I said okay. Chapter 510, Holding Hands. What? That's it? Old Wu had agreed? Zhang Yi's spirit was a little shaken, as he did not believe what he had just heard. Even though he had already confessed with the knowledge that this was in a five times reduced difficulty environment, which would otherwise prove impossible in normal circumstances, he still did not harbor much hope that he would succeed here. After all, in terms of their characters, age, or work, they were basically from two different worlds. To be in a relationship together? It was probably because there was nothing much in common between them, that Zhang Yi had blurted out that verse of the stone bridge. 
this verse stemmed from a story. Or rather, a story from John Yi's original world. Anan Yi one of the ten principal disciples of the Buddha. His full name was Ananda. The name had the meaning of to like, to celebrate, and being untainted. He was Buddha's younger cousin and became a principal disciple of Buddha after becoming a monk for more than twenty years. He had good memory and could remember much of Buddha's teachings and was named the prime in conduct to Buddha. Ananda was blessed with naturally good looks, a face that glowed like the moon, eyes that were like the lotus flowers, and body as clean as a bright mirror. Even after entering monkhood, he could not resist the temptation of women. One day, Ananda said to Buddha, I fell for a girl. Buddha asked Ananda, How much do you like this girl? Ananda replied, I would be willing to reincarnate into a bridge of stone, taking in 500 years of the cold wind, 500 years of the blazing sun and 500 years in the beating rain, only with the wish that she would walk once over the bridge. How much did he like her? But exchanging a lifetime for love at first sight? Willing to wait, but not asking for any returns. Understanding all of this and yet he was still willing to endure all that suffering just for a moment of meeting. Ananda, just how much do you like that girl to give up everything and choose the path of torturous love? This was the full text of the origin story. In his previous world, there was a very well-known movie which had also used these lines. When Zhong Yi heard Wu Zuching ask how much he liked her, he reflexively answered with this Zen verse. What mattered was that he had also felt this way in his heart as well. He had really liked this gentle and beautiful lady and thus rushed to confess to her. He really had not expected that Wu Zuching would agree. This was unbelievable. Other than disbelief, he felt more disbelief. Zhong Yi was so happy that a smile bloomed on his face, Are you sure, Sis Wu? Wu Zuching said, Ha ha, didn't I already say it? Don't fool me, all right? I will take this to be your serious answer. Zhong Yi was getting excited as his heart beat faster and louder, feeling worried at the same time and asking to make sure again. He could not help it at all. This surprise had come too suddenly, so sudden that Zhong Yi felt that it was unreal. She just said, really. Zhong Yi smacked his thighs and shouted, okay. Wu Zuching turned back around and held the mouse in her hand, let me read the new chapter of A Legend of Wukong, first. And she continued on with her reading. Zhong Yi stayed by her side, but did not bother her anymore. He thought to himself if this was the result of the five times reduced difficulty, or the power of verse of the stone bridge. If Wu Zuching did not say why she agreed, then Zhong Yi wouldn't know exactly why she agreed to it either, but it was likely that both had contributed to the reason behind her decision. Great! This bro has been alive for over twenty years and has finally found a girlfriend. And it's even such an earth-shattering woman? If this were to get out, it would surely scare a whole lot of people. Five minutes. Ten minutes. After a long while, Zhong Yi's excitement still had not died down. His heart was still beating crazily fast. Watching Wu Zuching from the side, he felt that he liked her even more as he looked on. He was more and more attracted to her with each look as his hand unconsciously picked up the box of branded chocolates that old Wu's pursuer had sent her. Without even asking for old Wu's permission, he unwrapped the packaging and began eating some. If he had to say something, it was that the chocolates tasted quite good. When old Wu heard the rustling sound, she looked over and said, Why are you eating chocolates so early in the morning? It's too heaty, so don't eat so much. It's not good for your body. Zhong Yi raised his hand and asked, You want a bite? She did not take it, but said, It's too sweet. It's not that I want to eat it. Zhong Yi picked up another piece and threw it into his mouth, finishing up the whole box in just a short time, since you're my girlfriend now, this box of chocolates from my rival has become my trophy. She smiled and said, if you want to eat it, then just take it. Zhong Yi asked, you finished reading? Yes. I finished reading. She said. How was it? Zhong Yi was anticipating her answer. She nodded her head, it's very good. Big Sis used to have the urge to write a novel herself too, but after reading yours, I found out that I don't have the talent to do so. But Zhong Yi did not feel so, you're being too modest. With your literary knowledge, you are more than qualified to write one. Don't keep using such polite forms with me anymore. She suddenly said. Zhong Yi nodded, okay, 
I will just address you more simply in the future. Then with a slight hesitation and a light laugh, he said, so, so what should I call you from now on? She laughed, anything is fine. Zhong Yi blinked, isn't it weird if I were to keep calling you Sis Wu? She laughed lightly, what do you want to call me then? Why don't I call you Old Wu? That's more endearing. Zhong Yi said. Wu Zeqing noticed his collar looked crooked so she reached out to adjust it for him. She then pulled away a strand of messy hair from his sideburns. These actions were very natural, and nothing felt wrong about it. Anything. If you want to call me Old Wu, then let it be Old Wu. Ha ha, go ahead. Zhong Yi did not move and just sat there allowing Wu Zeqing to adjust his shirt and hair. He closed his eyes, visibly enjoying the care and gentleness of Old Wu. Old Wu. Eh? Shall we both go out for a walk? Where do you want to go to? To the park or hiking, anywhere is good. Weren't you intending to go traveling during the new year? We can just move about in Beijing and treat it as a holiday. It's Valentine's Day today, so we shouldn't just stay at home. Didn't you say that you don't celebrate foreign festivals? Eh? Did I? I think so. Ahem, then don't treat it as Valentine's Day, but we should still go out and enjoy ourselves. All right. Great, let's go. Let me get a change of clothes. I'll have a shower then. They simply went ahead with their plans after just briefly discussing it. On the car. The two of them had already left the city and headed straight for the suburbs. In the car, Wu Zeqing found a pair of sunglasses and put it on. Zhong Yi did the same, but also added a face mask to keep his privacy. After all, the two of their statuses weren't exactly ordinary. One was a government official, while the other was a celebrity. They had to take precautions since it wasn't possible for them to just go out openly without causing a stir. They would just be looking for trouble if they did that. Beside, if someone saw them, they would not be able to enjoy themselves quietly as well. It was Old Wu who drove Zhong Yi's X5 because they had considered the road conditions might not be too ideal out in the suburbs. This car was much more adaptable to the conditions out here. Zhong Yi was in the co passenger seat and kept glancing over to Wu Zeqing. He felt as though he was living in a dream today and everything felt rather unreal at the moment. He had actually won over Old Wu. Just how many blessings from his past lives had he accrued to even have managed this feat? People are always unable to stay satisfied, so naturally when Zhong Yi remembered that he wouldn't be able to see her anymore in a few more days, he asked her, Old Wu, do you really have to go? She softly chuckled a little, I have to wait for the notice first. Zhong Yi pouted, why don't you not leave for the south? Peking University is such a nice place, you should just continue working here. It's an organizational requirement and not something that I can just reject or request. She slowed down the car as they were approaching a traffic stop, actually. Big Sis does not want to leave either since I have already gotten used to the capital. Zhong Yi said, then why don't you just suggest that to the organization? It wasn't easy for us to get together and now you have to leave after not even a few days of being together with me. Wu Zeqing reached out her hand and lightly placed it on Zhong Yi's thigh, the posting has not been issued yet and nothing is certain for now. Let's not talk about this for now and just enjoy ourselves while we are here. Zhong Yi sighed a little and glanced at her hand which was on his thigh. He coughed and quickly reached his hand over and placed it over the back of her hand. Wu Zeqing continued to drive and did not really react to it. Zhong Yi understood and moved his hand to hold her hand tightly. Old Wu did not look at him and just continued watching the road with her eyes. But Zhong Yi could feel that the hand in his grasp also tightened its grasp on his hand as well. The skin was very soft and the bone structure very refined. How comfortable! With his heart in swing, he could only feel blessed. Chapter 511, Love Token Morning. 8.30 a.m. at the main entrance of Summer Palace Park. Today's weather was extremely good with the sun reflecting off the water and streaming through the leaves of trees. The signs of spring could be seen even though spring had not yet arrived. There were many visitors outside the park as a lot of local and foreign visitors had gathered at the main entrance area. They were either buying food, waiting for people, or queuing up to buy tickets. Who needs a tour guide? Mineral water, $2 for one bottle. You need tickets? 
you can get it for a third cheaper here than the ticketing office. There were many black market tour guides and ticket scalpers who made the main entrance area even more lively. After parking the car, Wu Ziqing and Zhong Yi walked over to the main entrance. Old Wu's nude colored heels clicking as she walked and her stunning long chipao attracted countless eyes. Many of the visitors turned their heads swiftly, even some of the foreigners had to look several times and were attracted by her beauty. Classic beauty, gentle, and dignified looks, this was an ideal traditional beauty in China. Whether it had been in ancient times or modern times, old Wu was the top in good looks and was the type that all men would wish to marry. Everywhere she went, she would grab the attention of others and leave them amazed. F asterisk asterisk K. What a beauty. She's so goddamn beautiful. This person might as well have just walked out of a masterpiece painting. What a pity, she's wearing sunglasses and we can't see her eyes. Some of the park visitors were pointing and softly discussing about her. But the sunglass wearing Wu Ziqing did not have any reaction at all. She took her coat from Zhong Yi's arms and put it on as they walked side by side. Zhong Yi was feeling show offy. Beautiful, right? She is this bro's girlfriend. Old Wu, wait for me here. I'll go get the tickets. Zhong Yi said. Wu Ziqing held him back at his shoulders and said, Let Big Sis go. Zhong Yi exclaimed, Why are you still being so polite with me? Aren't we already boyfriend and girlfriend? Hearing that, Wu Ziqing smiled and said, OK then. After Zhong Yi bought the tickets, he and old Wu both entered the park. The park was buzzing with a lot of visitors at today and since it was so crowded, no one really noticed the two of them. Zhong Yi said, ever since I started working, I've been busy as hell and have not managed to come to Summer Palace anymore. The last time I was here was with my hostel mates during the second year of university. Wu Ziqing said as she gazed gently at Kunming Lake, I've not been here in years either. Come to think of it, I mostly visited this place as a kid, so all of this seems pretty nostalgic to me now. The two of them walked on. As it was the winter break, there were still many university students who had not started their school year yet. Around them were a lot of young university couples holding hands and strolling around the lake. They were the envy of those around them. Zhong Yi stole a glance at Old Wu as his hand slowly moved over. When they were in the car earlier, he had gone with the flow and held Old Wu's hands when she placed it on his thigh, but now while walking around and with so many people around them, even if Zhong Yi wanted to hold her hands, he felt rather embarrassed to do it. The back of their hands knocked onto each other. Once. Twice. Zhong Yi still did not hold her hand after a prolonged internal struggle. But when Wu Ziqing turned her head to face him, she broke out a smile from the corner of her mouth and gracefully moved her hand over and grabbed Zhong Yi's hand. The palm of his hand was warmed by old Wu's soft and jade-like hand. Zhong Yi's heart was calmed by this action and felt that this was what one would call paradise. The two of them strolled around Kunming Lake hand in hand, occasionally chatting and sometimes enjoying the view. Not long after, when they almost reached the stone gate, Wu Ziqing stopped walking and rested on the white marble stone wall. She looked out over the vast surface of the lake and took in the view. Zhong Yi said, shall I take a photo? Sure. Wu Ziqing took out the DSLR from her bag. She had prepared all the necessary equipment since they were coming out today. Zhong Yi immediately helped to take some pictures of her and even took them from several angles. He had wanted to take a picture together with her, but felt that it wasn't time yet. There were too many people around right now. If he were to take off his face mask and sunglasses, there would surely be some people who would recognize him. If that were to happen, then they had better forget about having any more fun today. Zhong Yi asked, are we in a relationship for real? Wu Ziqing acknowledged with a soft affirming voice. Zhong Yi blinked, you better not regret your decision and go back on your word, old Wu. Wu Ziqing smiled and asked, why would I? Didn't I already agree? What's the matter now? Are big sis words being taken so lightly now? That's good enough. Zhong Yi was more at ease now, it's just that I feel that this feels too unreal and thought that you might just be playing with me, so now if we're to do some things that lovers do to each other, you mustn't be angry with me, all right? Wu Ziqing's back was facing him and her long flowing hair brushed against his face as she said, ha ha, what do you want to do? Zhong Yi coughed, nothing much, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. 
Old Wu lightly slapped the back of his hands three times. She told him, Big Sis wants to give you a gift. What is it? Zhong Yi asked, releasing her hand and took a step aside. Wu Zixing did not answer, but turned aside to remove from her left wrist with her right hand a string of her Qian Jade beads. It did not look like it was any ordinary her Qian Jade and more like Yangji White Jade. It had a warm look and was matched with some leather. Zhong Yi was stunned, what's this? Wu Zixing held his hand up and put it on for him, it's a gift for you. No, no. Zhong Yi tried to push it away, this stuff is really expensive. Such a large string of jade beads would surely cost a few hundred thousand? Or is over a million? He wasn't too sure either of the market price of Yangji white jade in this world, but he knew that it was definitely very expensive. So how could he dare to accept this gift? Old Wu said, if I want you to have it, then just accept it. This was given to me by my parents. I've already worn it for more than ten years, but today, I wish to give it to you. After she helped him to put it on, she nodded and said, it looks good, keep it on you. Worn it for over ten years? When he heard that, Zhong Yi said, then all the more reason that I cannot accept it. Wu Zixing looked at him and said, we are already in a relationship now and Big Sis just wants to give you a little something. Why is that a problem? Ha ha. If you see a nice art craft later on, you can get it for me and return the favor. Zhong Yi sighed, an art craft wouldn't cost more than several tens of dollars. How can I use that to return the favor? He was a little stunned, but asked, Old Wu, is this considered as a love token? Wu Ziqing said modestly, if you think it is, then it is. Upon hearing this, Zhong Yi no longer rejected the gift, all right, then I will accept it. That old Wu would give him such an expensive gift, Zhong Yi was actually very happy. It wasn't a matter of how much it cost, but rather that it seemed like he mattered more to old Wu than he thought. Moreover, it seemed certain that old Wu was not joking about them being in a relationship too. The bigger issue here was pressure. In the past, Zhong Yi had already earned quite a bit of money and it was easier to return a proper gift favor, but now, this wasn't the case. Just a few days ago, he had agreed to pay the compensation to the publishing firm out of anger and had depleted all of his savings. Even if he did not lack the money to have dinner or such, he still could not afford to get a gift that was good enough. Buy a similar bracelet? Or buy a high-end lady's watch? But he didn't have much money. This was also one of the reasons why Zhong Yi did not want to accept the gift just now. It was because he felt that he couldn't return a proper gift favor. Even though Old Wu had mentioned that he could just get her some art craft or trinkets, Zhong Yi knew he wouldn't want to do it this way. He wanted face and wouldn't allow himself to do any lesser and all of these reasons entangled him. What should he get for Old Wu? How would he even afford to get her a proper gift? Chapter 512, The International Math Olympiad Next to the lake. The sun's rays were trickling down and created a picturesque look. Looking at Wu Ziqing's graceful face from the side, Zhong Yi's heart was moved. He couldn't hold back and took a photo of her side profile. The more he looked at her her, the more he fell in love and became infatuated with her. She turned around, let's go. Zhong Yi said, okay. There are some arts and crafts items there, let's go take a look. When she went past Zhong Yi, she held his hand very naturally by taking him at his arm. Zhong Yi's heart was beating fast as he said, no, let's not see those. She smiled, what's the matter? That's not befitting of you. I need to consider carefully what I want to gift you. Zhong Yi pulled her along away from there. Wu Ziqing was just about to say something when the cell phone in her bag rang. She took it out from the bag to check who was calling before answering, hello. It was a woman's voice on the other side, sounding like a 30-something-year-old, cheerfully saying, Old Wu, it's Valentine's Day again, who are you spending it with? Zhong Yi's ears had pricked up immediately thinking it was a love rival, but when he heard a woman's voice on the other side, he was relieved and walked on indifferently with Old Wu. Wu Ziqing spoke as she walked, ha ha, I'm out with a friend. The woman's voice, with a friend? Who? Wu Ziqing looked at Zhong Yi and said, even if I said, you wouldn't know who. The woman voice was getting very curious, he, we've been friends since we were young. Quickly tell me, who managed to win you over? Wu Ziqing elegantly replied, make a guess. What? 
So you've really been won over by someone? The woman sounded a little shocked. Wu Ziqing shook her head, are you even an educator? Why are you using words like that? The woman sounded anxiously curious, don't try that nonsense with me. Quickly tell me who it is. I'm too curious right now which god had managed to win over our comrade old Wu. No way. You have to let me meet him. I have to see who that person is who has so much charms that he could even break into the heart of a leftover woman who has not been in a relationship in so many years. What's he called? How old is he? What does he do? Does he have three heads and six arms? Wu Ziqing laughed heartily, you always have so much to say. All right, I've to hang up already. Don't hang up on me. If you do, then our friendship ends here. That woman voice asked again, so who is it? It sounds quite noisy over there, are you at a restaurant for a meal? Wu Ziqing answer, I'm at the park. Park? Which one? The woman sounded stunned. Wu Ziqing said, Summer Palace Park. The woman was stunned again and broke out into laughter, ha, huh, Summer Palace Park. What a coincidence. I'm at Summer Palace Park too. Wu Ziqing laughed, stop playing around. Heh, why would I lie to you for? I'm really at Summer Palace Park. The woman said in a speechless manner, don't you know? It's the International Math Olympiad today and students from all over the world are here to attend. The organizers are Beijing City and the venue is Summer Palace Park. Didn't you realize that there are a lot of foreigners in Summer Palace Park today? I'm the deputy leader for China's team this year and brought the students over at 7 a.m. this morning. International Math Olympiad? Zhang Yi was slightly taken aback. He seemed to have the impression that there was news of Beijing holding the competition, but hadn't expected it to be held at Summer Palace Park? And it was even today? On the foreign festival of Valentine's Day? Was this a hint from the mathematics world that if you have dedicated yourself to mathematics, then you would no longer have the need to celebrate Valentine's Day and was fated to live a lonely life? Wu Ziqing said in surprise, is that true? The woman said, yes, it's true. Where are you at? Come look for me. Wu Ziqing, I'm at the Stone Gate area. Come with that guy over to my side. There's a directional signage and the banner for the competition. If you just keep walking straight from where you are, you'll be able to find me. See you in a bit, the woman's voice commanded. Ha ha, I didn't say that I would be going over. Old Wu said. Just come over quickly, that's settled then. Do do do, the call was cut off. Zhang Yi asked, your friend is here too. You heard? Your ears are pretty good. Wu Ziqing said, it's a childhood friend of mine. Her name is Xin Yi and she's one of the top mathematicians in our country. Zhang Yi said, mathematician? She doesn't sound like one. His impression of a mathematician has always been one that was a little more rigid and boring. Wu Ziqing explained, her character's not so rigid, but her level of professionalism cannot be doubted. In the world of mathematics, she is quite well known. Zhang Yi said, let's go look for her then. If you're okay with that, then we could meet her? Wu Ziqing asked him respectfully. At such times, Zhang Yi definitely would not refuse the meeting. This was old Wu's childhood friend they were talking about. It might even be a test from old Wu since he would have to pass the test of the childhood friend. An organism like a childhood friend was an especially scary thing. They might not be able to help with putting things together, but to destroy something. They were more than enough to have a say in a relationship. Because of this, he felt that he needed to handle this properly or else if that person were to form a bad impression of him, then it could possibly affect the relationship between old Wu and him. The two of them had just gotten together a few hours ago, so it would definitely be trouble that a biological being such as the childhood friend could bring. Let's go meet her. Zhang Yi said as though as he was going to meet an important opponent. Wu Ziqing held him by the arm again and said, OK, then let's go. Zhang Yi was enjoying every moment of old Wu holding his arm and it made him feel extremely satisfied. This was especially true when he noticed the park visitors around them looking over at them, and he would feel extremely good about it in his heart. Subconsciously, as he walked along, his posture also straightened as he gathered up his confidence. Suddenly, his left arm accidentally knocked into a very soft area of Wu Ziqing's body. 
It was as though his arm had sank in slowly and then quickly rebounded from it after. After a few steps, it happened again. It wasn't deliberate, but it was unavoidable if their arms were crossed. It was very soft. They were scarily big. Old Wu didn't seem to have noticed or maybe she did not mind as she kept just quiet. But Zhong Yi's heart was pounding. As he walked along, his footsteps also became a little unnatural as all of his focus was on his arm. As Old Wu's breast size was too large, she did not usually wear a bra that had underwires in it. It might not be able to hold them, or it could be too uncomfortable due to squeezing too much into a confined area. The type of bra she'd wear were usually the wireless type. If it were the underwire type of bra she was wearing, Zhong Yi might not have felt much even if his arms were to accidentally brush against them, but since she was not, Zhong Yi was able to get the most out of it. This was really too alluring. Ahem, old Wu. What should I say later? Zhong Yi communicated with her before meeting her friend. Wu Zicheng asked, What do you mean what should you say? About us, should we tell the others about it? Zhong Yi asked. She said gently, If you wish to say it, then say it. If not, then don't say it. Zhong Yi said, Okay, I know what to do. After walking quite a distance, they turned onto a path leading uphill. As expected, there were many foreign visitors on this side of the park. They were probably here to view the Math Olympiad as well. There was even a banner and slogans at the foot of the hill written with phrases like welcome all the participants from every country, and some English signage to inform the visitors of certain rules. The first rule was clearly saying, no disrupting the competition with unnecessary noise. It looked like they were getting nearer to the competition venue by now and they could feel the tension of the competition in the air. Chapter 513, you must have calculated that with a calculator? On a platform on the hill. The pine trees leafing out in green were showered with the rays of the gradually rising sun. Upon reaching the grounds where the annual International Math Olympiad was held, the venue this year took up a large area of the park. In the inner area, where the competition was being held, there were barricade tapes put up labeled with the word, restricted. The park visitors, who were on the outside, could not see how the contestants were doing inside as they were blockaded far away from the inner area, but it wasn't quiet on the outside either. Being a global competition, and with the Chinese as the hot favorites this year, there was naturally a lot of emphasis, otherwise they would not have picked Summer Palace Park as the grounds for competition. There were many local and foreign park visitors, as well as the relatives, friends and teachers of the competitors present at the venue. There were also quite a number of media staff present today. There were also many math-related games and activities being held around the competition area. Topic boards were placed along in front of the greenery, some hanging from the pine trees and and some from the artificial rockery. Many of the more difficult questions would award a prize if it were solved and were mainly meant for the visitors to take part in. Like Sudoku. Like Nine Squares. Like Speed Calculations, etc., etc., etc. Upon noticing that there were reporters around, Zhong Yi and Old Wu, who had just reached the hillside, naturally parted their arms. It was definitely better to keep a low profile. A female park visitor said, Oh, it's so lively here today? Mom, I want to play some math games too. A little kid said. An old man, who came to watch the competition, said, The Americans were the champion for the previous term, right? I wonder how our Chinese kids will do this time around. A youth said, The championship will definitely be ours this year. A lot of foreign visitors were discussing fervently as well, but he could not understand what they were talking about. As it was too crowded over there, Zhong Yi and Old Wu did not head into that area. They just stood around the perimeter where the pine trees and bamboo forest crossed paths Wu Zicheng then sent a message to Xin Yue. Not long after, Wu Zicheng said, she's coming. Zhong Yi looked around and asked, which one? Wu Zicheng stuck out her chin towards a general direction, that one wearing black framed glasses. Just as she finished speaking, Xin Yue, who had just managed to squeeze past the crowd, spotted her too. She was smiling as she waved, old Wu. She wasn't tall and her looks were pretty normal. Her hair was a little sparse, perhaps as a result a clever mind. In any case, she could not be considered as pretty though her demeanor was quite good. 
Her eyes were also glittering with a sense of wisdom and she didn't seem like the kind of mathematician that Zhong Yi imagined she would be. Wu Zuching had already started talking to her even though she was still quite a distance away. Why have you not gone in yet? The leader is with them right now and there's also little hand from your Peking University's mathematics department. I had to come out because the air is too suffocating in there. Xin Wei laughed heartily. Wu Zuching said, Little Han. I'm talking about Han Henian, the one that sent you the love confession on Weibo this morning. Xin Wei said, He's one of teachers selected for the Chinese team this time and is here as an observer. Old Wu was previously a vice president of Peking University while Han Henian was a teacher in the mathematics department. Although he had shown some good results over the past few years and was a rising star in the mathematics world, he did not have much in common with old Wu. They were also not quite on the same level, so Wu Zuching did not seem too familiar with him. Even if they met in the past, they still did not know each other, but Zhong Yi had already burned this name into his mind. He would definitely not forget each and every love rival's name. He even tried to use an acrostic poem to woo my old Wu. Pfft, how immoral. Zhong Yi was naturally full of malice towards these love rivals. He was totally biased against this person and not the issue. After squeezing through the crowds, they finally managed to get closer to each other. Xin Wei stopped in her step, as her extremely curious vision set itself onto Zhong Yi's figure, Oh, aren't you a little too overdressed? I can't even see your face. Professor Xin, hello. Zhong Yi's eyelids jumped a little with his hand stretched out. Why, hello to you too. You're kinda young. Xin Wei shook hands with him before turning sideways and sniggered, Come clean, what's up with the two of you? When did it start? Wu Zuching smiled, Make a guess yourself. How old is he even? Xin Wei asked curiously. Wu Zuching replied, Twenty something. Xin Wei said, That young. Sis Wu, are you robbing the cradle? Wu Zuching laughed, You've always been this way. Nothing good ever comes out of your mouth. Xin Wei went on, I'm really curious about how you've suddenly brought one of these out of nowhere after being single for so many years. I thought you'd just grow old and die alone, so I'm still getting used to this. He won't even show his face, at least let me see what he looks like. As she said that, she took another glance at Zhong Yi's face. There's too many people around and even reporters. It's not convenient. Wu Zuching smiled and said, when there's no one around, then he'll show you. Xin Wei wondered, so what if there's a lot of people around? It's not as if you're some big-time celebrity. Who would care about you? As if a single middle-aged woman like you would be afraid of some scandal? Zhong Yi rolled his eyes thinking, who was she to make such a comment? Middle-aged woman? Wu Zuching shook her head and laughed, you're only about a year younger than me, how could you say that about me? Haha, <laughs> your mouth has always been harsh since we were young. She looked back to Zhong Yi and said, you two should have a face-off one of these days since the both of you can speak so well. And she turned back to face Xin Wei, but I doubt that mouth of yours would be able to fend off little Zhong. Zhong Yi did not say anything and kept quiet. But Xin Wei was amused, what do you mean by that? Someone dares to challenge me to an argument? I might be in the field of mathematics, but I've never ever lost an argument before. Looking at your friend, he seems rather introverted. I can't see how he can argue with me. She was rather headstrong too and did not seem convinced by Wu Zuching's claims. Zhong Yi laughed a little and threw his hands back, old Wu's praising me too much. When it comes to arguing. How could Zhong Yi possibly lose to her? Because that mouth of his was what earned him his keep. He was an expert and a professional at such things. If this had been in the past, in any other situation and against anyone other than her. Zhong Yi would surely have started a dispute with them, but today, he was being very humble and low-key. Zhong Yi was being extremely gentlemanly today, acting with grace and self-restraint. He knew very well that since he was young, he had never behaved as decently as he was now. Right now, he was left with no choice as old Wu was standing beside him. Even if he wanted to, Zhong Yi just couldn't be his usual cocky self because he had wanted to put up his best behavior for her. For him to have so much self-control, he felt that this must have been the power of true love. He had never met anyone like this since he was born, and was even disobedient to his parents, 
but old Wu was able to make him want to put on his best behavior. It was just like when Sun Wukong met Buddha, or when a layman met an expert. Old Wu was like a gentle sea which Zhong Yi had fallen into and no matter how hard he swam, he just could not get out of it. Xin Wei asked, what do you do? Wu Ziqing answered on his behalf, a teacher at my school. Oh, from Peking University too? Xin Wei was getting even more curious, which major? It was Zhong Yi who answered this time, I teach in the Chinese department. Xin Wei laughed, our professions are natural jinxes to each other. The mathematics and Chinese departments were indeed like the southern sky and northern sea. They were worlds apart. After exchanging a few lines, Xin Wei suddenly discovered something and stared curiously at the Yangji white jade bracelet on Zhong Yi's wrist, huh? Old Wu, my sis Wu, you've even given away that bracelet that your dad left for you more than 10 years ago? Ayo, you're really serious about it this time, aren't you? Wu Ziqing said annoyingly, don't say it out so loudly, you're being an announcer now. That's because I'm so surprised, that's why. Xin Wei said sourly, when I told you that I liked that bracelet while we were still at university, you did not give it to me no matter how much I begged. When I asked you to lend it to me for a couple of days, you even kept nagging at me to take good care of it, but look at where it is now, you've given it away just like that? Wu Ziqing hugged her coat tighter and laughed a little, it's just a simple accessory, but don't you go around telling anyone about it. Keep it a secret, all right? All right, all right. Do you think I'm stupid? Xin Wei continued to ask, so what did he give you as a token of his love? Quickly show it to me. Wu Ziqing was about to say something. But Zhong Yi knew that old Wu would try to speak up for him and explain the situation. He did not feel that this was necessary and thus honestly, while embarrassingly, said, I've not had the chance to gift her something yet. I'm still thinking about it, do you have any suggestions? Xin Wei laughed and said, Sis Wu likes things like jade or similar stuff like it. All women like stuff like that. Wu Ziqing laughed while shaking her head, I don't like things like that anymore. Xin Wei glanced at her with despise, don't act like you don't. Zhong Yi could understand that old Wu must have have known that he did not have any money left and so denied that suggestion on purpose. She was probably afraid of causing him to feel too much pressure, otherwise why would she have suggested that she just wanted a little craft art as a gift when he asked her? Old Wu was an especially caring woman deep down and this was exactly the reason why Zhong Yi liked her so much. A famous calligraphy or a painting piece. Indeed, Old Wu liked those things very much, but those were not suitable as love tokens. Xin Wei's suggestion had given Zhong Yi an idea. Jade? Hum, jade? Or diamonds maybe? Yes, he definitely had to get something along these lines for Old Wu. She had already given him her treasured Yangji white jade bracelet, so if Zhong Yi did not give her something important to match the favor, it would not feel right. The three of them started chatting. At first, Zhong Yi and Xin Wei were still a little unfamiliar with each other, so they did not talk much. But very quickly, they opened up and then after that, there were others who joined them as well. A woman walked up to them, Hey, aren't you President Wu? Wu Ziqing took off her sunglasses, Director Chen. Xin Wei clearly knew her as well, Director Chen is here too. Professor Xin, aren't you the deputy leader for your team? What are you doing out here, said someone from the Mathematics Association who had just walked over, isn't the competition almost done? Xin Wei looked at her watch, it should be done any time soon. That middle-aged man from the Mathematics Association said, President Wu is here to support our participants today too. Wu Ziqing laughed, I was just here by coincidence. A thirty-something-year-old mathematician, wearing sunglasses, sporting a crew-cut and rigid-looking man followed along behind. He did not even look at a beauty like Wu Ziqing and started speaking to Xin Wei, Professor Xin, I was helping a group of students with a question about function simplification which I would like to discuss about with you. I'd like to seek your advice later. Xin Wei smiled and said, sure, let's do that once the competition is over. As they chatted, the group formed into a circle and they continued to chat away. In this group were some of the elites of the mathematics and education world. Wu Ziqing probably did not know most of them, but it was clear that most of them knew who Wu Ziqing was. A common person might not know this famous person of the education world, the vice president of the top educational institution of the country, 
but those who belonged to this circle definitely knew of her identity. Suddenly, a few people from the media took notice of Wu Zeqing, who had taken off her sunglasses. As the vice president of Peking University, her status at this sort of international competition was definitely one of the highest. Naturally, an interview with her would be a worthy one, therefore a few of those reporters from the television station and newspapers came over to this side as well. President Wu. I am with Jinsha newspaper. I am from the Beijing Times, will you accept our interview? Being amongst a group of people chatting about higher mathematics and with the reporters interrupting as well, Zhang Yi felt a little out of place. He did not have much that he could chat about with them, nor was he interested, so he walked away quietly and just went wandering elsewhere. Wu Ziqing, who was being interviewed noticed Zhang Yi, but continued to diplomatically chat with the reporters, regarding these eager young mathematicians, we must. A mathematician, who had noticed Zhang Yi standing beside Wu Ziqing earlier asked Xin Wei, whose student was that? Xin Wei didn't say much, but answered, he's a teacher too. We just met and were chatting. That person curiously said, I've not seen him around before. He's a teacher from the Chinese department. Xin Wei added. That person said, oh, I was wondering why I didn't know him. Thereafter, no one paid any more attention to Zhang Yi or thought that he had come together to Summer Palace Park with Wu Ziqing. About 50 meters away. Zhang Yi had strolled to the quiz booth area where he observed some of the park visitors gathering around, trying to solve some math problems. Suddenly, he felt that it looked quite fun as well. Ah, I got it right. Little kid, you're smart. Is there a present? Yes, here's a teddy bear for you. Beside each quiz board stood a male or female youth. They were likely university students majoring in higher mathematics and were serving as volunteers for this event. Zhang Yi had a look at each of the quiz boards as he walked on. Finally, he spotted a question that was more difficult and had a cell phone as the prize for giving the correct answer. The cell phone brand was unheard of by Zhang Yi, but looked to be one of the better brands in this world. Zhang Yi had been considering upgrading his cell phone for some time now, but did not as he was cash-strapped in recent times. He decided to give the question a shot and walked up towards the quiz board. Behind him, Xin Wei was approaching, ha ha, what's your honorable name? Zhang Yi turned around and said, lose the honorific, my name is Zhang Yi. Xin Wei noticed the quiz board that Zhang Yi had been looking at just now, what's the matter? You interested in math too? SOSO, I guess. Zhang Yi replied. Xin Wei said, this question is not simple at all. It was a mental rapid calculation problem. For 3821 multiplied by 81257. To a normal person, this problem might seem very difficult and they would probably need a calculator to get the answer, but to a mathematics expert, it could be considered easy. There was still a way to break it down into an easily calculable way using a formula, but for a five-figure and difficult-to-break-down number to be multiplied quickly and mentally, even a skilled mathematician would need some time to solve it. They might even have to resort to using pen and paper. The objective of this question was mental calculation with a time limit of 30 seconds. Zhang Yi stood in front of the quiz board and looked at it for a few seconds. Then he asked the female university student volunteer standing beside it, do you have a marker pen? Here. The volunteer handed him a marker pen. Zhang Yi raised his hand up and wrote, 35607629997. The volunteer was stunned. Behind him, Xin Wei was also slightly taken aback. Zhang Yi asked, is this correct? Oh, yes it is correct. The volunteer nodded. Zhang Yi coughed and put his hand out, then does that cell phone belong to me now? The volunteer shook her head, no, it doesn't count if you used a calculator. You have to solve it using mental calculation. Zhang Yi nearly fainted, but that's what I did. The volunteer shook her head, unconvinced, you only looked it at for a few seconds. Unless you're a top mathematician or a mental calculation expert, you would not be able to answer this so easily. You must have calculated it using the calculator on your cell phone when you were standing at a distance just now. Then you memorized the answer and walked over to attempt the question. This will not count at all. Zhang Yi nearly fainted again, but I really calculated it mentally over here. Seeing this, Xin Wei was tickled. 
If she were to try to answer this question unprepared, she would not be able to do it faster than Zhong Yi. In fact, she would take a much longer time than he did. After all, her main major was not in the field of mental calculation. This was the reason why she knew that Zhong Yi had depended on the calculator application in his cell phone to solve it from afar, before coming over. She attempted to resolve the situation by saying, All right, teacher Zhong, you're a teacher of the Chinese department, a teacher of the citizens, stop teasing the young girl already. Your sister. Who or why am I even teasing anyone for? I am being serious here. Damn, this bro wasn't even given the chance to explain. Meanwhile, Wu Ziqing, who was done with the interview, had come over as well. Some other mathematics world's professors and teachers also came over when they saw the situation going on here. What's the matter? Someone from the Mathematics Association asked. Oh, someone managed to answer this question? I was just thinking of giving it a try myself. A young mathematician asked curiously, so who answered it? How long did it take? The volunteer pointed to Zhong Yi and cried out, this gentleman only used a couple of seconds to answer, so I did not give out the prize as I believed that he had used a calculator to get the answer. There were a total three cell phones to be given out to the first three people who could answer it. It was just those few sets, so of course she had to be fair and scrutinize each winner's claim to it. The group of mathematicians looked at Zhong Yi. That young mathematician said, oh, a few seconds? I couldn't even solve this in a few seconds since this kind of larger number is harder to analyze and break down, there's considerably many more calculations needed. These quiz questions were actually conceived by the organizers from the mathematics world. The level of difficulty for every question was known to them and the prizes allocated were also based on the difficulty of the questions asked. The mathematics experts present all knew that this particular question was not one that could be solved in a matter of a few seconds. Around them, many park visitors heard the commotion and had squeezed together at the scene, looking at comrade Little John with contempt. How shameful! Such a disgrace to our citizens! This was an international competition and there were so many mathematicians from all over the world present today, yet this person dared to try to claim a prize by using a calculator to solve a quiz question? Just how shameless can he get? A mother covered her child's eyes and said, don't look and don't learn from such a person in the future. The little girl nodded earnestly and said, I understand, mom. Zhong Yi. Xin Yi laughed diligently and helped Zhong Yi rescue the situation. After all, he was her childhood friend's alleged boyfriend. She said, teacher Zhong was just joking around, right? Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi was at a loss of whether to laugh or cry. I'm joking? Your sister, I'm joking. Of course, Zhong Yi had calculated this question himself. He had factorized it several times, obtaining two equations. He had then mentally derived a few summation series before finally solving the question. Back then, this fellow had eaten more than a hundred books of higher mathematics skill experience books. Now, he had used his new abilities to answer this question, but because he had solved it too quickly, he was accused to be bragging by this bunch of people. Me? Cheat? Your sister? There goes my new cell phone. Chapter 514, John Yi's Nationalistic Youth Spirit. In the forested area. On a platform. I even heard that he was a teacher? It seems like he is a teacher from Peking University. The quality of teachers these days. Peking University? What a disgrace. Luckily the foreigners did not understand what we were talking about. Dad, that person was totally shameless. Even I feel embarrassed for him. If using a calculator was allowed, I could do it too. Ignore him. Oh, looks like the competition is ending soon. Whether it was people from the mathematics world or the park visitors, all of them were pointing at Zhong Yi and talking about him. They only stopped when they saw that the competition was about to end before heading over to the competition area to find out about the results. They were all looking forward to the competition results and ranking of their country's participants as it was a matter of national honor. Meanwhile, Zhong Yi, having failed to win the cell phone prize and had even gotten into a big mess with everyone staring at him with contempt, was feeling terrible. He was almost on the verge of vomiting blood as he stared at the volunteer in anger. When the volunteer noticed, she stuck out her tongue and made a face at him, as if to show him that she was not afraid of him. 
she was still convinced that Zhong Yi had cheated using a calculator. When Zhong Yi saw this, he was even more annoyed. He nearly wanted to jump on her and bite her, thinking why he even deserved this in the first place. Forget it, this bro has gotten himself a new girlfriend today and was in a good mood, so he did not take it up with her. He had to admit that Wu Ziqing held a really important place in his heart. When old Wu came over to see what was happening, she did not say anything and that was all that Zhong Yi needed to keep himself well behaved. All she had to do was to stand there and Zhong Yi would not dare to create a scene. After the incident had passed, the surrounding crowd did not hang around anymore. But when Xin Yi walked past Wu Ziqing, she said in a whisper, Sis Wu, why do I feel that this friend of yours is a little unreliable? Wu Ziqing smiled but did not speak. She was not bothered by the comments, but went over to Zhong Yi's side and said, you're even getting yourself involved in math now? Aren't you a liberal arts practitioner? I, sigh, let's not bring it up anymore. Zhong Yi rolled his eyes. A crowd had gathered outside the competition area as the participants started streaming out from the competition grounds. The demurely dressed Wu Ziqing looked over and said, let's go take a look over there. Zhong Yi did not move and said, you go ahead, old Wu. There's too many people there and I prefer this quiet place. It's just as well since I want to look for a toilet to have a smoke at. Wu Ziqing gently reminded him, smoking is not allowed in this place, so bear with it. Zhong Yi helplessly replied, all right then, I'll listen to you. Wu Ziqing smiled a little and said, I'll head over there then. For such an international event, since I'm here, it'd be inappropriate for me not to go. Stroll around by yourself for now, I will look for you later. All right, go do what you need to. Zhong Yi said. When old Wu left, Zhong Yi found a spot at a big rock display at the perimeter grounds. The area was littered with soft drink and tabs and burger wrappers, which Zhong Yi picked up and threw away before sitting down. He observed the crowd at the competition area and picked out old Wu's figure, looking at her from behind in appreciation. He did not blink and no matter how he looked at her, he felt that he couldn't find anything that he disliked about her. This was not a sight that he would ever get tired of. Even though the pain of the loss of the cell phone prize was still embedded in his heart, it was really insignificant compared to the feelings he had for old Wu. A little before 10 a.m. At the competition area below the gently sloping hill, youths from all over the world were gathered outside at the yard area. Most of them were teenagers around 15 years of age, while some of them didn't even look like they were 10. They were all geniuses in mathematics from all over the world. Each nation's team leaders and teachers also walked out with different expressions. Red. Orange. Yellow. Green. Blue. Indigo. Violet. There were people of all kinds of colors. A few young participants of China's team appeared looking rather down. Amongst them was a girl who looked to be oldest, with her eyes red and tearful. When the park visitors saw this, their hearts sank. Did we lose? What place did we get? Little girl, don't cry anymore. You all were great. Yeah, you all did well. Quickly wipe your tears, auntie can't bear to see you in such a state. This was their home ground and most of the park visitors were Chinese citizens as well. When they saw the team in such a dejected manner, they started shouting their encouragements to the children. A Chinese middle-aged mathematician walked into the yard area with a heavy expression and asked, what placing did you get? That girl's name was Huang Lingling and she was the eldest on the Chinese team at 17 years old. As the leader of the children, she wiped off her tears and answered with her teeth clenched, third place. I, I made a mistake. Behind her, a 12-year-old member of the team pulled at Huang Lingling. He was Huang Lei Lei, Huang Lingling's brother. He said, sis, it's not your fault. Don't cry anymore. That's right. Leader, it's not your fault. The other team members were also offering their consolations. Teacher Wang Yiming, who was the team leader, and Peking University Mathematics Department's Han Henian, who was here as observer, were with them too. Wang Yiming was a 40-something-year-old middle-aged man. He was a soft-spoken person and did not say much. But Han Henian's expression was extremely bad. When they came out, he immediately said with a straight face to Huang Lingling, you even practiced a similar question to the one that was given to you just now, why did you still get it wrong? The other Chinese mathematicians were also full of size. 
Huang Lingling was still wiping the tears off of her face. Her younger teammates did not know how to react and were blaming themselves for breaking their teacher's trust, as well as the expectations of the whole nation. Their mood right now was at rock bottom. At their peak, the Chinese team had gotten first place in the International Math Olympiad for three years running, but due to a small mistake last year, they had lost their hold on the championship. This year, not only were they unable to gain back first place, but they couldn't even defend their second place position. The deputy leader of the team, Xin Wei, also joined the group. She did not look like she was in a great mood either. Having worked so hard in the past year, from the team selection, training, and preparing for the competition, their results had dropped even further than before. This made her disappointed and she said, we'll come back again next year. Huang Lingling said tearfully, teacher, I'm sorry. The rankings for this year's competition were announced. In first place, the United States. In second place, United Kingdom. In third place, China. Seeing this, many of the visitors who had come to Summer Palace Park did not have the mood to watch on anymore. They were all preparing to leave, but an announcement mentioned the next round of events for the International Math Olympiad would be starting soon. When they heard this, they stopped in their tracks. It wasn't over yet. There were still further competitions? It seemed like this International Math Olympiad was really not ending here and, according to previous year's practice, an event would be held after the youth competition. The student participants, teacher leaders, and even the general public were allowed to take part to foster friendly international relationships among mathematicians of all countries, and to create an opportunity for the exchange of information. They might not be able to communicate through their spoken languages, but mathematics was their common ground and their medium of communication. In this event, each participating country would set a topic and put up an equivalent prize to it. It was similar to the outdoor activities that were catered to the park visitors earlier that morning. If anyone could answer the topic satisfactorily to the requirements of the topic setter, they would earn the right to take home the prize. The prizes were generally items that were representative of the countries. For example, China's prizes would usually be a national level paintings or the four treasures of the study, items that were either antiques or masterpieces. Some of the Western countries had also put up a masterpiece oil painting in the past, but no one had been able to win it as the questions were too difficult to solve, though not unsolvable. Even if there were so many mathematics experts present, there were always some topics that were very tough and would take more than one to two days to complete. This was also one of the reason why some of the prizes were such treasures. There were also examples of some countries that put up money as the prize, handing out several tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands worth of scholarships. All of this depended on how difficult the topics were. Of course, there were also countries who were here to make friends and exchange knowledge with the others. Like United Kingdom for example, they were always gentlemanly in their behavior and put up a good prize every year for their topics which were relatively easy in comparison. In short, each country had their own style. The event this year was also another chance for the different countries to measure up each other's abilities and face off again on competitive terms. If they did not place too much importance on it, the participants would just chat and exchange their learnings with each other, contributing to a harmonious feel. Some countries who did not enjoy such good relations would prefer to fight it out and have a victor declared. These were the types of incidents that would attract the attention of the most people every year after the main competition was over, as there would surely be some countries whose mathematicians would battle it out with the other countries resulting in furious battle situations. But of course, such incidents were usually not reported by the media. The newspapers and television news agencies tended to not report such happenings. The event began. The official time the event ended was at, 5 p.m. Almost a whole day was allocated to this event and only at the end of it would the International Math Olympiad be considered complete. If there was a competition, then there was always a resulting victor and loser. Many of the Chinese park visitors were still hoping for a chance at revenge, so they stayed behind to watch the going ONS. What are the prizes this time? I don't know, but I'm really looking forward to it. Let's win the prize that the Americans put up for their topic. Right, we have to show them what we're capable of. They've caused our children to be in tears. The children might have lost their round, but the adults will surely win, won't they? Even though the Chinese mathematics world has not contributed much with any breakthroughs to the mathematics world, 
everyone knew very well that the Chinese were smart and had very high standards in mathematics. Like Xin Yue, Wang Yiming, and the other mathematicians present, all of them were considered as tops in their field of mathematics. This was also the reason why everyone was paying a lot of attention to the second round of competitions. One of them was Zhang Yi, who was seated at the outermost area away from the crowds. He was not interested in the competition itself, but rather on those kids who were China's representatives at the International Math Olympiad. Hearing the chattering from the park visitors, he had realized just how much time and effort these kids had put in, even delaying their studies and wasting away their youth just to be here for a chance at glory. Now that he saw how the student leader, Huang Lingling was crying with her team mates and the adults not caring about their feelings, he felt very uncomfortable. This bunch of mathematicians, including old Wu's childhood friend, Xin Yue were really too much. The children had already given it their best, so what if they lost? Was it so difficult to give some consolation to encourage them? Why were all of them putting on dark expressions at the children? If old Wu were not here and if not for her sake, this bro here would have already gone ahead to give all of you a scolding. What the heck was this? And that bunch of foreigners too. Fuck, how dare they bully our kids. At this moment, Zhong Yi's nationalistic youth spirit was burning strong. His focus swept towards the group of people in the competition grounds. Everything just seemed wrong and unpleasing to his eye right now. Chapter 515, One of the World's Top 10 Mathematical Conjectures the countries taking part in this event went to their allocated spots in the yard. Every country had placed writing boards at their exhibit booths with translations, and a display area to showcase the contributions of their nations to the mathematics world. The prize and topic for this round of competition were displayed as well. Go for it. Beat them. Don't lose this time. Children, don't cry anymore. Let your teachers get back at them for you. The Chinese park visitors were cheering them on and some of the foreign park visitors were also cheering their own country's teams on. It was a lively scene. The prizes were announced. The United Kingdom's team had revealed a scholarship check at their display booth worth £50,000, a very generous amount. Next, one of their team staff members revealed the topic which most of the visitors could not understand, but the other country's teams of mathematicians or the participants of the Math Olympiad could understand what they saw. It was the same as previous years, where the United Kingdom team did not propose an extremely difficult topic, but it wasn't easy either, and the common conclusion that everyone reached was that it could be solved. The display booth for the Chinese team was hosted by the team leader, Wang Yiming, and deputy leader, Xin Yue. Han Henian and some other seniors of the mathematics world were around as well. As they were the hosts of this year's event, their display booth was also allocated a larger area. Many people had come and several authority figures of the mathematics world were also present. Some of them were standing around in the Chinese team's display booth, while others went around to other countries' display booths to check out their topics. The prize put up for the Chinese team's question was an ink painting, likely drawn by a famous Qing dynasty painter. The painting was of an eagle, looking very ferocious and lifelike, and drawn with vigorous but finely detailed brush strokes. The possible value of this painting was not low, probably around the range of several millions. As for the topic, this year, the Chinese team had proposed one of greater difficulty than they had in previous years. If it were too easy, there would surely be a loss of face if someone were to answer it too quickly. A mathematics expert from China had suggested this new topic with regards to geometric drawings. After discussing with people like Xin Yue and Han Henian, they decided that it would be used as their topic for this event. They had even spent quite a bit of effort on it. The Japanese team. The Korean team. The prizes and topics were displayed out one by one. Wow. The Koreans have put up a rather good prize. Yeah, it's quite valuable. Germany has a good one too. Japan's prize is a little miserly, it looks pretty worthless. Even if they did not understand the topics, the park visitors would still understand the value of the prizes. They were standing around pointing and making comments of each nation's prize. They were on higher ground than where the event was being held and could not enter the event area, as there were barricade tapes put up. Only some of the related organizers and media personnel were allowed in, but from where they were, they could still view the whole event very clearly. 
Wu Zuching was in the event area too and was chatting with several other leaders of other higher institutes of learning. Han Henian just noticed Wu Zuching's presence and was stunned for a little while before greeting her, President Wu, what would you be doing here today? Wu Zuching smiled and replied, I was just coincidentally at this place. Nanjing University Mathematics Department's dean stroked his beard and laughed, Teacher Han, you're really brave. I heard that you confessed to President Wu on Weibo. Around him, a few other mathematicians also laughed along in a kind manner. Han Henian might be a rookie in the mathematics world, but his background was very good. He had a lot of potential and many of the mathematics world's elders had high hopes for him. When they brought up this subject, Han Henian felt a little embarrassed and coughed awkwardly. That dean said, our president Wu is not someone you can just woo so simply. You've got to buck up. If you really manage to win her over, then you'd make all of us in the mathematics community very proud. Han Henian laughed dryly, sure, I will try my best. As he said so, he noticed Wu Zuching's expression. She was looking especially beautiful today in her dignified Chipao dress. Wu Zuching still maintaining her gentle smile said, it's better to stay focused on the event activities for now, it's starting already, isn't it? Everyone could sense that Wu Zuching did not want to be involved in this sort of gossip and so made no mention of it anymore. Not all jokes should crack blindly in this way. With the mention of the event, those mathematicians' expressions became serious, little Han, are you going to attempt any of the topics? Han Henian nodded, I'll go ahead then. If I can't do it, there's still Professor Xin and Professor Wang. A senior mathematician said, you've got to crack the Americans' topic. We're the organizers this time, but our kids could only place third. So all of you have got to work hard to gain back our honor. With a pause, he continued, the Americans were too atrocious last year and purposely set an unsolved math problem star. Hopefully, they won't repeat such behavior again this year. Han Henian replied, I understand. At this moment, the Americans were the last to reveal their prize. When everyone saw it, they were stunned. A few blonde-haired American mathematicians took out a small box, placed it on the display stand and opened the cover. In it was a green jade thumb ring that had engravings on it. Looking at the oxidation on it, it was definitely an old antique, an old jade ring of at least a few hundred years old. Because the quality of the jade was not too good, it was probably from the Qing dynasty where these stone deficiencies were generally more accepted and not like the standards of modern days, where people always asked for crystal clear types or solid green jade, but in terms of value, this would not lose out to the higher grade jade stones, as it was considered as an antique. There were experts in the crowd. A jade thumb ring? That engraving. It should be a palace treasure. Was this smuggled out from the palace in the past? It has to be, that oxidation shows that it's at least a few hundred years old. Much of the history in this world had not changed. The days of the siege of the international legations also existed in this world, so it was highly possible that this jade thumb ring was seized from the houses in the capital or the royal family and smuggled out of the country. It was not known how the ring got into the hands of these American mathematicians, or why they put it up as a prize for their topic. Generally speaking, this event was also used as a platform to promote the culture of the countries. The teams would usually bring out something that was representative of their country's culture as the prize, but no one would have expected the American team to use an item that was looted from the Chinese for the prize at an event that was held in China. What's more, it was an event held at Summer Palace Park. This was the kind of situation which should only exist in a person's imagination. A lot of the park visitors could not accept this. Holy sure asterisk T. The Americans are doing this on purpose. This is so numbing. They're climbing on top of our heads. The park visitors from other countries and their mathematicians could not understand what was going on and were left confused and blinking. Shin Yue had an adrenaline rush from this provocation, these bunch of Americans, they're good yeah. The soft-spoken team leader Wang Yiming said with a sunken expression, are they provoking us? A senior from the mathematics world said in anger, this is so maddening. We have to solve the Americans' topic for sure this time. That item belongs to us and we have to get it back. Han Henian face darkened, don't worry. At this point, the Chinese mathematician's morale was extremely high. The Chinese media reporters also pointed their equipment over at the jade thumb ring, snapping away as their faces showed dark expressions. 
Wu Ziqing also saw that jade thumb ring, but it was unknown what she was thinking at this time. Zhang Yi was also provoked by this action of the Americans. Anger turned to laughter, and then he noticed old Wu's eyes and had a sudden thought. Jade thumb ring? Old Wu seems to like it very much. Zhang Yi touched the love token given to him by old Wu on his wrist and gave it some though. Over there, under the watchful eyes of many people, the Americans finally revealed their topic for this year. When it was revealed, curses and swears were heard. They're doing this on purpose. It's that topic again? Are they finished with it yet? This is the exact same topic as last year. The same topic as last year? The Chinese mathematicians were all looking downcast now and the other countries' mathematicians were frowning or shaking their heads. The Americans were too disrespectful. The park visitors could not understand why there were such huge reactions at first until the student volunteers, who were now stationed around the barricades explained it to them. This was Dale's conjecture. It was one of the unsolved math problems asterisk of the world. It was an unsolvable topic that had troubled the mathematics world for several decades now. This problem was first suggested by the Americans several decades earlier, and countless mathematicians had worked on it tirelessly for so many years without ever coming close to solving it. At first, it was a problem that wasn't significant to the mathematics world, but it slowly gained the attention of everyone. More and more people of the world now knew about this math problem. Even if those park visitors could not understand from looking at the proposed topic, when they heard the words, Dale's conjecture, they seemed like they were suddenly enlightened. This was why it was considered to be one of the, top 10 mathematical theorems to exist in the modern age and no one has managed to solve it yet. The Americans brought out this topic? They did it last year and they're doing it again this year? They had no intention to foster good relations at all. The American mathematics world had sent a team who did not seem to place any importance on this event and were simply doing this perfunctorily. They were just lifting their country's previous thought-up theorem and using it here as a topic without any effort. They were probably just intending to finish up the event and get back home to their country, doing all of this without respect for the other country's mathematicians. They were too arrogant. Xin Yae said in annoyance, if everyone were to use these sort of problems for their topics, what's the point in have this event at all? A park visitor angrily shouted, solve it. Show those Americans what we're capable of. Right, solve it. Those Americans have gone too far. An old man also joined in the shouting. But when they heard that, the Chinese mathematicians were at a loss whether to laugh or cry. Solve Dale's conjecture? If we could f asterisk asterisk king solve it, we wouldn't be standing here. We would have already won an international prize for mathematics. Would we still need to wait for an opportunity like this event today? This was a math problem that baffled the world of mathematics. The Americans were unsportsmanlike. Wang Yiming and Xin Yi knew this and knew that they would be unable to get the jade thumb ring back, but they could not say so. After all, Dale's conjecture was indeed proposed by an American and for them to use it at this event, it was impossible to scrutinize. A United Kingdom mathematician shook his head, the Americans are too unsporting. A French mathematician said, to use such a question is really meaningless. Everyone knew that this was unsolvable and thus shifted their attention over to the other country's topics. Except for one person, and that was Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi stared hard at the so-called Dale's Conjecture for a long time. He had not heard of this Dale's Conjecture over in this world, but what startled him was the content of this theorem. Hmm, why did it look so familiar? Chapter 516, Fermat's Last Theorem. It was really too familiar. And it became more and more familiar. Disregarding the noisy crowd and discussions, Zhang Yi moved further away to a place where there was no one. He sat down and quietly opened up the game interface. Then, in the game's merchant shop, he bought a memory search capsule and swallowed it on the spot. His vision blurred and he landed in his sea of memories. Back in his previous world. He was back to his high school days. Back then, every Friday afternoon was an allocated school break, but if there was a need, the Education Bureau would set this school break to become an interest-based class in the latter half of the year. Every student would have to register their interests for different topics and Zhong Yi had at that time tried to register himself for art classes, since it took the least effort on the student's part, but as every student thought the same way, 
The class was already fully registered, so he had no choice but to choose another. The classes conducted were not covered in the basic lesson plans, but was instead used to expand their knowledge. This was Fermat's conjecture, one of top three mathematical conjectures of the world. Its history dates back several hundred years and was finally proven in 1995, meaning to say that it is no longer known as a conjecture now, but as Fermat's last theorem. Teacher, can you explain it to us in detail? Haha, <laughs> I do have some detailed information here. Let me put it up on the projector for everyone to take a look. Even if I were to explain it, none of you would be able to understand it. Yes, even I do not have the knowledge to understand it. The proof to this theorem is an extremely complicated process and my capabilities are limited. Wow. It's even in Chinese and English? How deep, this is too amazing. A. Eh? You understood it. Ah, no. I totally didn't get it. He was back to the current world, slowly opening his eyes again. Zhong Yi was still puzzled before searching his memory, but now everything was as clear as could be. He had wondered why it was so familiar at first, this Dale's conjecture, IBM conjecture, or whatever conjecture it was called. It was simply just a change of names. Because the first person to have proposed this conjecture was named Dale, that was the reason for it being called Dale's conjecture. But it was obvious now that the name of the conjecture had nothing to do with the contents of it, as this Dale's conjecture was essentially the same as his previous world's Fermat's conjecture. This was it. The conjecture's contents were still the same. The only difference was that this conjecture had not yet been solved by the mathematicians of this world. It had only been proposed several decades earlier, while in Zhong Yi's world, this math problem had already been solved. Fermat's conjecture together with four-color conjecture and Goldbacher's conjecture were known as the mathematics world's three great conjectures. Zhong Yi glanced over to where the American mathematicians were. One of the mathematicians, named Louis, was getting some shut-eye. Another young mathematician called David had gone over to the French booth and was chatting with a female French mathematician. He looked like he was trying to pick up girls. As for the United States youth participants, who had been ranked first in the competition earlier, their faces were full of pride and they were smiling brightly. John Yi smiled coldly. Dale's conjecture? It's no big deal. He picked up his cell phone and found Old Wu's contact. He sent a message to her, Old Wu. Old Wu, who was standing very far and had her back facing him, looked like she was still looking at the jade thumb ring. She had not reacted to his message probably because of the crowd and noise around her. Zhong Yi made a call over to her and hung up after a few rings. He could see that Wu Zeqing finally noticed her cell phone ringing and picked it up. After a short moment, a reply from her came, yes? Zhong Yi replied, you like that jade thumb ring? Wu Zeqing, ha ha. It's not bad I guess. Zhong Yi, then that means you really like it, right? Wu Zeqing, they wouldn't possibly sell it. And even if they did, Big Sis wouldn't afford it either. That's probably an antique from the palace, so it's definitely a very valuable item. Zhong Yi looked up at the prize, then replied, All right. Wu Zeqing, question mark. Old Wu clearly did not understand what he meant. Zhong Yi stopped replying, kept his cell phone, and headed towards the crowd. With the event area. As the leader, Wang Yiming had gone over to the Americans' booth with Xin Yi and Han Henian following behind. They lodged a stern protest against the American mathematicians in English. Wang Yiming said, Why did you use a treasure from our nation as the prize for this event? The leader of their team, Louis, looked at him. They seemed to know each other and were definitely no strangers, Wang, this belongs to us. Wang Yiming said, Can I assume that this is provocation on your part? No, no, no. Louis said, this item was given to us in a will by one of our mathematics association's teachers. When he passed away last year, he had some of his personal items donated to the association and dictated that it be used for the promotion and research of mathematics. I don't know the history and origins of this item, but right now, it does not belong to you. Its ownership belongs to us and we have the right to use it as we please. There is no other meaning to it, so please don't misunderstand. Xin Yi said, but you've already caused the misunderstanding. David, who was flirting earlier, had come back around, what's the matter? 
Wang Yiming pointed at the topic board, change your topic and let us have a fair fight. No. Louis wagged his finger, this will be our topic, Wang. We've been studying and researching Dale's conjecture and want to use this math problem to foster further learning between other countries. Is that a problem? There's nothing unfair about it. Besides, the competition has already ended and our team won the championship. That is the result of the competition and there's nothing else to have a fair fight about. David threw up his hands and smiled, saying, what a pity. The competition had already ended and there was no chance of gaining back their pride in the after event. The Americans had even put up a prize that was taken from their country long ago. The Chinese mathematicians were all furious. Many of the park visitors had also heard about it, especially the younger ones whose English were pretty good. Your sister. How arrogant. What the heck are they showing it off for? Pfft. A lot of the park visitors around the perimeter of the area had started cursing and scolding. When that youth named David saw this, he gave a handsome smile and waved at them, not understanding what they were saying. He even gave a flying kiss to one of the tall female park visitors. He seemed like frivolous man, but at the same time was full of confidence. The crowd got even more furious when they saw this. At a corner. The youth participants of China had gathered together. Sis, don't cry anymore. Huang Lei Lei felt very sad seeing his sister like this. He kept tugging at his sister's arm beside her. Leader. Leader, we don't blame you. The other children were consoling her as well. Huang Lingling had taken very good care of them for the past half year like an elder sister should, and every one of them liked her very much. They did not want to see her in this manner. But Huang Lingling was a very stubborn girl. She was the team leader for this year's International Math Olympiad, and was chosen from a few million students from thousands of schools all over the nation to represent the country. She did not only represent herself or her school, but represented the entire country in taking part in this competition. As the team leader, she had committed several key errors which left her with deep regrets. She even felt that if she had not taken part in the competition and was instead replaced with someone else, their results would have had been better. She felt that this was all her fault and she had let her teachers and professors down. Seeing how their teachers and professor ignored them after they lost the championship, she felt even worse knowing that they had been utterly disappointed in them. Blame me. Just blame me. Huang Lingling just bit her lip and did not say anything else. Suddenly, she raised her head and looked towards the American team's topic board, the look in her eyes became very firm and she suddenly got up to walk towards it. Huang Lei Lei was stunned, sis, what are you trying to do? The other young participants also rushed over to her, leader? Very quickly, other people around them also noticed Huang Lingling's odd behavior. They looked over at her, confused as they did not know what she was going to do. Louis looked strangely at the little girl, eh? In the next second, Huang Lingling had taken out the marker she used during the competition, clenched her teeth, and stood in front of the American team's topic board. Looking at that world-renowned math problem written on it. She stubbornly held up the marker, ready to try to solve the question on the blank writing board beside it. She wrote a formula on it and clenched her teeth again, then clumsily wiped it away with her hand and rewriting another one on it. She wrote and stopped and wrote and stopped and it looked like it was a mess. With her level, she would, of course, not be able to solve such a kind of difficult topic. Even if it were not her, her teachers, or her teachers' teachers would not be able to solve it. The crowd finally understood that this young girl wanted to solve Dale's conjecture to make up for her earlier mistakes. Was it for honor? Or was it for pride? At this moment, many of those park visitors were moved. Including Zhong Yi who was making his way over, he stopped in his footsteps and looked hard at that stubborn girl. The mathematician's participants from the other countries were all looking over at her by now. Some of them stared blankly, while others kept silent. Some of the others were smiling mockingly. David from the American team shook his head and said something that no one understood. In any case, it did not seem polite. An American participant glanced at Huang Lingling and asked, what does she think she is doing? I don't know, said another participant. She sounded sarcastically, a topic that has yet to be solved by so many mathematicians in the world and she thinks she can do it. What a clown! 
an American youth said. The children from the American team were all laughing at her. A youth representative from the United Kingdom team went over and said to her kindly, don't write any more. You won't be able to solve it. The mistake you made earlier in the competition was just a careless one, you'll definitely do better the next time. A French girl also said, yes, you did great. But Huang Lingling did not appear to have heard anything. She just carried on doing some calculations, writing and erasing and writing again. Wu Ziqing sighed. The park visitors around could no longer bear seeing this. Good child, don't write any more. The competition was lost, but we don't blame you. It is not your fault. Child, all of you are the pride of the country, so don't blame yourself anymore. It's going to be all right, it's really going to be all right. When she heard all these supportive words, Wang Lingling's eyes turned red again. Her tears were flowing down her cheeks into her mouth, but she did not wipe them off her face. She just continued trying her best and continued with her calculations in front of the topic board. Huang Lei Lei clenched his fist and walked up too, sis, let me help you. And me, another one of the Chinese team's youth participant grabbed a marker as well. Leader, there's still us. Let's all do this together. The youth participants of the Chinese team were all standing beside Huang Lingling. Some of them were only about 10 years old and not even 1.4 m tall. They all held markers in their hands and even had to tiptoe to reach the writing boards. In front of this great and famous math problem, all of them looked very minute. Chapter 517, Declaring War on the Mathematics World with On Horses Everyone had different expressions. Everyone in the crowd was feeling different emotions. A question board and several forlorn-looking children, the scene was very solemn. Xin Yi looked at them and finally said something, Lingling, Ling, Lei Lei, all of you come here. Huang Lingling Ling turned around and said to Xin Yi, Professor Xin, I, I still want to give it a try. A Nanjing University professor standing at the back said in a harsh tone, all of you come back here right now. This is not something someone of your level can even attempt. It involves all sorts of higher math learning and knowledge which none of you have even learned before. Huang Lingling lowered her head and continued on. Huang Lei Lei said, Teacher, please let my sister try. He understood that his sister was blaming herself. Having made those mistakes, she was just trying to make up for it. Wang Yiming sighed and said, Don't try it anymore. Han Henian also looked at Huang Lingling and the others. Seeing how their team, the organizer for this year's event, had become the butt of jokes of the other countries, especially to the Americans, his temper flared. They had already lost the competition earlier, and now their young participants went a step further to get ridiculed. They were putting up an embarrassing spectacle in front of others. Han Henian let out an angry grunt, what the heck are you trying for? Don't you think it's already embarrassing enough? Come back here, all of you. You couldn't even solve a simple question in the competition just now, what makes you think you can solve a math conjecture? If you have such time, you should go back and drill yourself with more basic mathematics practice. Huang Lingling stopped writing. She could no longer go on further. Her team members also lowered their heads, not daring to speak. Wu Ziqing's eyes looked towards Han Henian. Beside her, an authoritative professor of the mathematics world was shaking his head and sighing, the children in the past few years are increasingly lacking in talent. There are too few good saplings around anymore. Huang Lingling covered her mouth and sniffed, I'm sorry, it is all my fault. The old professor said, we don't blame you. When it comes to talent, no one can always get it right. Some kids were born to do maths and would understand if when we just prod them a little, while some other kids have a limit to what they can understand, even after we have taught them everything. If you've hit this limit, then there's no way you can improve any further. Talents are born, not bred, there's nothing more we could ask of you and you have already tried your best. Hearing the old professor tell her that she did not have the talent for mathematics, Wang Lingling lowered her head even more. She clenched her hands tightly, feeling more guilty with each word from him. A female mathematician said, I guess we'll have to find a new batch of children for next year's competition. The old professor nodded, yes, look carefully this time in the schools. We'll need to use all available resources, otherwise, we won't be able to get any good saplings. Another middle-aged professor added, we must not lose in the next international math olympiad again. 
I will get my people to search for better talent when we get back. Han Henian said, it will be difficult. Xin Yue looked at the children and said, we have to do it even if it is difficult. As long as we have good and talented saplings, I will fight hard to bring them here. The failures in successive competitions had also left her burnt out and moody. These children had been chosen from many others and weren't exactly untalented, but compared to the young participants from other countries, they were still lacking. The results of the competition spoke for themselves. Han Henian pouted sulkily. The old professor said with some regrets, a thousand Li horse is hard to find. Although they did not speak very loudly, many people could still hear their conversation. Huang Lingling secretly wiped her tears. The other children in the team also looked very down, so they were really not the best there was, they weren't geniuses and were still lacking in comparison to many others. Many of the park visitors who heard this felt that their words were too harsh. Ha! Ah. A thousand Li horse is hard to find? Zhong Yi looked at Huang Lingling, Huang Lei Lei, and the other children. He thought of the situation earlier, when his rapid calculation of the quiz was mistaken to be cheating by this bunch of mathematicians who claimed that he had used a calculator. They keep claiming that good saplings can't be found anymore. How laughable. Zhong Yi was tickled, he was really tickled. All of a sudden, he emerged from the crowd and exclaimed, if you don't have the abilities to teach the children well. Don't keep making excuses. With that, everyone looked over to him, stunned. Who was this? What did he mean? Why did he start scolding others the moment he appeared? Xin Yue frowned and looked at Wu Ziqing. Wasn't he old Wu's scandalous boyfriend? Why was he saying such things? What was he trying to achieve with that? Huang Lingling also looked up in surprise. That old professor and Han Henian, along with the other mathematicians, also looked over to the person who said that. Some of them recognized him as the Peking University teacher who cheated using a calculator. Han Henian said angrily, what are you trying to say? Seeing someone trying to create trouble, the old professor said, get rid of him. A few security staff member in charge of maintaining order heard this and went over to the troublemaker. But at this moment, Wu Ziqing spoke. She smiled and said, I want to see who dares to do that. The old professor's expression changed, President Wu. The security team was also taken aback and stopped in their tracks. When the Chinese mathematicians heard President Wu's words, they were all stunned. They could not understand why President Wu said that. Even if Zhong Yi was a Peking University teacher, he shouldn't cause trouble like this, especially in the presence of the media. Xin Yue was left speechless. She did not care for old Wu's sake anymore and said, this teacher, who are you referring to that did not teach their students well? Zhong Yi stared at her and said, I'm talking about you all. How dare you even claim that the children were being disgraceful? I think the ones who are disgraceful are you bunch. Old Wu's childhood friend? Get lost. Today, I won't care who you might be. A young mathematician said, a person who even needs to resort to cheating with a calculator, who are you to say that we are disgraceful? What's wrong with you? Zhong Yi laughed and questioned him back, how did you know if I cheated or not? The young mathematician said, you're a teacher from the Chinese department. How would you know rapid calculation? Zhong Yi laughed again, who says that a Chinese teacher cannot know how to do rapid calculations? That I do not know mathematics? The way you people look at others and issues are not based on facts, but your own skewed bias. With this kind of attitude, how can you call yourselves teachers? You won't be able to teach good students with such an attitude. And you all still want to seek out your thousand Li horse? What the heck? In this world, there was Bolo before there were thousand Li horses. Thousand Li horses are common, but a Bolo is rare. Even though there are thousand Li horses that are exceptional, they are disgraced under the hands of slaves, they die side by side in their stables, without ever becoming thousand Li horses. He recited without holding back. What was that? A classical Chinese essay? When those words were said, everyone froze. The old professor, Han Henian, and the others were angered by his words. Slaves? The park visitors liked what they heard. After seeing how these professors criticized the children with every sentence they spoke, their patience had worn thin. 
Suddenly, they felt what this young man wearing the face mask and sunglasses said made perfect sense. The only thing that left them wondering was the familiarity of this scene. This voice, where did they hear it from? Zhong Yi looked at those teachers and professors from the mathematical world and said coldly, a thousand li horse, can eat a dan of grain in one sitting. The feeder feeds not knowing its thousand li potential. Even if it could gallop a thousand li, without food, without strength, its potential will never be reached. If you can't teach. If you can't groom. Why would a horse be able to run fast? With that, Zhong Yi coldly laughed in an incessant manner. His voice became louder with each question to them, the driver drives not according to its proper method. The feeder does not feed enough for it to reach its full potential. You hear it nay, but do not understand its meaning. Instead, you raise the whip and proclaim. There are no thousandly horses under our heavens. At this moment, everyone kept quiet. Sigh. Zhong Yi mockingly laughed, are there really no thousandly horses? He looked at the old professor, Xin Yue, and the others, actually, they just don't know one when they see it. Unable to find a thousand li horse under the heavens? My ass, you can't. It's just because all of you do not know where to look. With the famous essay in his previous world's textbooks, on horses, Zhong Yi had scolded all of these professors from the mathematics world. Suddenly, the park visitors regained their senses and cheered loudly. Peking University? Teacher? Chinese department? This classical essay? This background? A Peking University Chinese department's teacher who could scold and invoke such anger, slap faces with words alone, could easily recite a classical essay that no one has ever heard of but still give goosebumps to those who heard it. Even if you searched through the entire world, there would only be one person who could do it. Other than him, there was no one else. A young park visitor said in surprise, Ah! It's Zhong Yi. Seeing that he had been recognized, Zhong Yi did not bother hiding his face anymore. He took off his face mask and sunglasses to reveal an expression of indifference. Damn. It's Zhong Yi. Heavens. It's really teacher Zhong Yi. The crowd erupted bolstered by the essay of, On Horses. Some people were even crying out in excitement. Well scolded. These professors do not know what's good for them. They lost the competition because they don't have the capabilities, yet they want to push all the blame onto the children? Their excuse is that the children do not have talent and the potential. Why don't you all just die? The children are already under so much pressure. Look at that little girl crying. And all you people can do is to keep complaining about this and that. Right. Support John Yi. Teacher Zhong Yi's mouth might be a little vulgar and likes scolding others, but his words truly make perfect sense. Compared to you educators who claim that you're doing everything for the country and citizens, to me, Teacher Zhong Yi is much more an educator than you all will ever be. This is the first time I'm hearing this essay about Bolo and the Thousand Li Horses. It's really too amazing. Teacher Zhong Yi's talents are really heaven defying. Don't cry anymore, children. It's not because all of you are untalented. You're all good children, all good. Right, don't cry anymore. Let Zhong Yi handle this for you. That guy's nickname as the professional face smacking Zhong is not for nothing. A normal person would not be able to out argue him. Who'd have thought that I could bump into Zhong Yi here at Summer Palace Park today? I'm so excited. Teacher Zhong Yi has always been my idol. I actually have the luck to witness the birth of my idol's new work. Support John Yi. The Thousandly Horse essay was well said too. It has taught me something. The reporters present were also jolted by this incident. All of them rushed forward to snap pictures of John Yi like they were on steroids. Having just finished his battle with the crosstalk world, was John Yi announcing the mathematics world as his next target. Pfft. A few reporters who had already dealt with Zhong Yi on previous occasions could no longer hide their joy. Zhong Yi was really Zhong Yi. He could not stay still for a day without creating some trouble. Chapter 518, Never Afraid of a Big Mess. On the internet. It had been a rather harmonious day so far. Confessions were happening all over Weibo. In Tieba, 
there were mostly threads relating to Valentine's Day being posted. The general mood of the forums were reflective of the loving mood everywhere else. Perhaps because of the past few days of incidents resulting in messy topics, war of words and fighting, the general mood on today's internet environment was rather peaceful. The netizens were also getting along very well. But this peace had only lasted for a short while. At some time past 10 a.m., someone broke the news on Weibo. Extra, extra. Live from the venue. John Yi made a surprise appearance at the International Math Olympiad held at Summer Palace Park. The mathematics world has been scolded. And the current situation is in chaos. It's difficult to know what's going on anymore over here. Ha! Huh? I'm gonna faint. Are you serious? What? Teacher Jong is up to something again? What the f asterisk asterisk k? I thought that Zhong Yi was writing Legend of Wukong back at home and I was still waiting for the next chapter. Why did he run off to pick a fight with the mathematics world now? Foot, I almost peed from laughing. Do a live broadcast from there. What's going on right now? A few users immediately uploaded some pictures of the situation, as it was too difficult to describe the ongoing situation with text. Then, a park visitor, who had a rather good standard of Chinese reposted Zhong Yi's essay. Perhaps someone had noted it down when Zhong Yi was reciting, or it could be because of the simplicity of the essay, the text for, on horses, had now appeared for the first time online. In this world, Bolo and the concept of Thousand Li horses existed as well, but that was it and it was fated that Han Yu's, on horses, did not exist. Therefore, this classic essay that was full of wisdom, philosophy, and reasoning had almost immediately caused a huge reaction online. Many of those who read it felt that it was a stunning piece. Great essay. What a classic. Every word was well written. How awesome. Pfft. Teacher Zhong Yi's literary talent is always for situations that don't seem appropriate. If his talents were used in proper channels, then he would surely be a big contribution to our country, but this astonishing literary talent of Teacher Zhong has been used for scolding people instead. Ha ha ha. It's only been a few days ago since he started battling it out with the crawlstalk world. Having wrapped that up, he's now marching towards the mathematics world as well? Ever since Zhong Yi debuted, he has always made us at a loss of whether to laugh or cry. Battling against the radio broadcast world, the television station, against the Shanghai SARFT, then the literature world followed by the crawlstalk world and now. It's the mathematics world's turn. Teacher Zhong, can I beg you to just give it a rest for a day? Just one day will do, then you can update Legend of Wukong before you head back out to start more trouble. A bunch of us are waiting for the finale of your novel, but look at you. You'd rather go to battle it out at the peak of Albatron than concentrate on proper work. Teacher Zhong's troublemaking is much more interesting than reading a novel. Supporting Teacher Zhong On Horses is a really beautiful piece. That bunch of mathematicians really went too far by bullying those kids that way. Teacher Zhong Yi is such a nosy person. Yes, I agree, but Teacher Zhong being nosy is exactly what I like about him. Sai, are there really no thousand Li horses? Actually, they just don't know one when they see it. This is a really good line. Every word of it touches my innermost feelings. Teacher Zhong's great. The youth participants were great too. The topic started getting attention and was actively being discussed. Someone even started a poll asking if Bola was more important or if the Thousand Li horses were more important. Summer Palace Park. In the yard at the event venue. Under the lead of Zhong Yi's essay, all of the surrounding park visitors were booing at Chinese mathematicians, making them look bad. Zhong Yi. Why was that grandson doing here? Those foreigners did not know who Zhong Yi was, since his fame was still not widespread enough. Whether it was the mathematicians or participants from the United Kingdom or French teams, everyone was suspiciously looking the youth standing there as their team translators explained the situation to them, but within the Chinese mathematicians, except for those who had dedicated all their time to maths and ignoring all other news and happenings of the real world, most of them knew who Zhong Yi was. Just the commercial for Brain Gold made most of them aware of who he was as it was the first thing they thought of when Zhong Yi's name was mentioned. The commercial's jingle was already causing a headache in their minds at the moment. 
they had all heard of Zhong Yi's reputation before. Sometimes, their circle of friends from the education world would even discuss about this person during their meals. A wonder of the entertainment circle. A thorn in the education world. A hooligan of the literary world. This person's reputation was so foul that one could even smell it from their grandma's house. He had offended too many people and many organizations had been scolded by him too. He was the type of person that would use violence to solve everything. As they've never seen him before, they did not realize how he was really like. These mathematicians had been apprehensive about believing the rumors they had heard, and had thought that those who spoke badly of Zhong Yi were just exaggerating. They would have thought that no matter how low a person's emotional quotient was, they couldn't possibly go around looking for trouble and scolding people. Why would anyone want to do something like that? However, now that they had witnessed Zhong Yi's antics firsthand today, all of the mathematicians and old professors nearly vomited blood. The rumors weren't true? Bullsh asterisk T. It was totally true. Not only was it not exaggerated, they felt that those rumors had in fact been too mild. Too, too mild. A thorn? He was basically a porcupine. And he had pricked everyone who was from the mathematics world. Xin Yi immediately turned to look at Wu Ziqing. She was staring and clenching her teeth. Old Wu, your little boyfriend's really too wicked, you had better make him stand back. But Wu Ziqing acted like she did not see anything and just sat down leisurely. Zhong Yi had made his way into the yard area by now as he continued walking towards the children. With that declaration of, I want to see who dares to do that, by President Wu earlier, the security team did not do anything to hold him back. The main reason was because they did not dare to. After the incident at the spring festival where Zhong Yi laid his hands on Li Anson's bodyguards, these security staff knew that if they were to get on the wrong side of this hooligan, he would definitely resort to violence. From this, it could be seen that Zhong Yi's fame was growing more and more by the day. In the past, no one could recognize him, even if he was walking on the streets, but now just his name alone was enough to get the attention of most people. Huang Lingling looked at Zhong Yi and suddenly felt very excited. Sis. It's teacher Zhong Yi. Her brother, Huang Lei Lei said, almost jumping up in excitement, that Zhong Yi who wrote Ode to Young China. A teenager beside him said unbelievably, teacher Zhong Yi. Is speaking up for us? Another teenager looked at Huang Lingling, leader, isn't teacher Zhong your idol? Huang Lingling started noticing Zhong Yi when he gave the Ode to Young China speech. She could still remember that night when she heard the sentence, My beautiful young China that is as eternal as heaven. My magnificent Chinese youth who are as bountiful as the land, that left her so excited that she was unable to sleep. She had immediately started looking for Zhong Yi's previous works that very night and found his talk show program as well. Even his recent three crosstalk performances, Huang Lingling had repeatedly viewed them over and over again. Although a lot of people were scolding Zhong Yi and his crosstalk performances for being vulgar, Huang Lingling still liked them very much. In this past half a year of focused math training, she had suffered a lot and felt very tired. Whenever there was time when she rested, Huang Lingling would watch Zhong Yi's works on her cell phone. Her parents had found out about this twice, while her teacher found out once, all of which had earned her a terrible scolding. Since young, she had always been very obedient, except for this, which she knew she was willful about. She promised them that she would not watch his works anymore, but when she went to bed at night, she would continue to watch discreetly on her cell phone under her blankets. She even followed the news about Zhong Yi. When she knew that teacher Zhong Yi had done something great, she would be cheered up. When he was scolded by everyone, she would become sad. All of her friends and classmates knew about this, that she was a hardcore fan of Zhong Yi. Huang Lingling had not expected that Zhong Yi would appear in person before her today. As his figure slowly came nearer. Before she knew it, Zhong Yi was already standing in front of her. He took out a napkin from his pocket and knelt down, reaching his hand out to wipe the tears off the corners of her eyes. Huang Lingling suddenly felt at a loss of what to do, teacher, teacher Zhong. Zhong Yi smiled, don't cry anymore. It's just a small matter. Thank you. Huang Lingling took the napkin and wiped off her tears herself, I've always liked you a lot. All of your works, I've seen all of them. She was stuttering with her words. Zhong Yi looked very happy, is that true? 
Huang Lei Lei quickly said, It's true, my sis likes you the most. Huang Lingling furiously nodded her head. She's a fan of this bro? What good taste. Zhong Yi laughed happily, since I'm here now, there's nothing to be afraid of. He turned around and glanced at the mathematicians, ignore them. How dare they say that you all are ungifted? They want a thousand li horse? Sure, let them touch their hearts and ask themselves first. Whether they can be a bow low. Zhong Yi has always been this way. He just said what he thought and scolded if he felt like scolding. It did not matter to him that there were many people around nor did the presence of the media affect what he wanted to say. He followed this principle in the things that he said or did. This was the reason why so many people hated him, but Zhong Yi just continued doing things the way he saw fit. Han Henian complained angrily, you better watch your words. The old professor, who was the most senior figure in the mathematics world present, said with a dark expression, how does the way we educate our student have anything to do with you? What are you creating trouble here for? Creating such a stir, don't you feel ashamed? First, it was the children who attempted in vain to solve the math problem. And now, it was Zhong Yi stepping up and creating trouble. Today's International Math Olympiad was already in a big mess, by the time the media received news of this and published it, their faces as the organizers this year would probably be all lost. Zhong Yi did not say a word yet, but the park visitors could no longer hold themselves back. Foot. He's just flaunting his seniority. How do you expect to educate the kids if this is how you all are? You're just destroying their futures. A child needs encouragement and affirmation. Is that how you all teach others? You're the ones creating trouble. A disgrace to our country. If Zhong Yi had not stepped forward with the essay on horses, these park visitors would not have likely said much. After all, the situation did not seem right for them to speak up or criticize anyone. At most, they would have felt rather uncomfortable with how things were, but as Zhong Yi had stepped up and the park visitors followed his lead, all of them joined in to speak up for the children. What happened next was just a natural progression of chatter and protests. It seemed like Zhong Yi's influence in Beijing was really not too bad at all. Those professors and teachers were being scolded terribly. Zhong Yi did not bother about them and just looked towards the children, let me teach you a life lesson. If someone tries to bully you, take a step back. Huang Lingling listened seriously. The park visitors also quietened down and started listening. Zhong Yi continued, if some tries to bully you again, then you should take another step back. Huang Lei Lei and the other kids all nodded at the same time. Xin Wei, Han Henian and the others looked at them unkindly. Zhong Yi continued saying, if that someone still tries to bully you, you take another step back again. Then with a pause, he said, but when you realize that you've stepped back too many times and the wall is right behind you now, and they still want to bully you, what do you next? A teenager raised his hand sillily, what should we do? Beat them up of course. Zhong Yi suddenly came up with an unexpected answer. Huang Lingling. Xin Wei. Han Henian. Many of the park visitors were totally amused by this. In the field of educators, only Zhong Yi dared to speak in such a manner. This person was never afraid of big issues, he was only afraid that the issues were not big enough. Chapter 519, Zhong Yi solving a mathematical conjecture. The park visitors were all discussing and chattering. What a classic. It's going to be another famous quote. Ha 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 ha. Those words have really turned the situation around. Ah, uh, is that really how they educate the kids? Some park visitors hurriedly transmitted the happenings to a live stream online to share with everyone. Some others held up their phones to record the ongoings before uploading them. These videos attracted more and more netizens to join in and watch excitedly. They were all standing by at their computers, requesting for the latest updates to be uploaded. It was as if they were watching a football match, chewing on sunflower seeds and drinking tea, commenting on or laughing every now and then. They only wished that this matter would blow up even further. The words that he had said just now were from his previous world, from a crosstalk performance by Guo Di Gang and Zhong Yi had presented it to this world on this very day. Around them at the other countries' display booths, the translators had explained to their mathematicians and young participants about what Zhong Yi had said. When they finally understood what was going on, many of them started laughing. 
a young participant from the United Kingdom was laughed so hard that all of his teeth could be seen. On the Korean side, they did not laugh as they knew who Jong Yi was. They knew he was famous for his insults of Korea and thus were biased against him. The Americans did not laugh either. The mathematician, David, raised his eyes and just looked on at how they were making a fool of themselves. Meanwhile, the American team leader Louis did not even seem interested. Everything here today could only be proven by capability. The strength of the Chinese on the international stage of mathematics was not exactly large, and their contributions were generally scattered around too much. They had no large contribution to claim for, nor were they able to make any impact at competitions such as today's. In the past, the Chinese had really high standards, especially showing it at this competition in the previous years. They had many championships to their name, but now it seemed like that standard had dropped drastically. They only managed to achieve third place this time and had been sliding down the ranks with each passing year. Naturally, the elite and authority figures within the American team looked down on the standard of the Chinese, and there was also no Chinese mathematician who had made any major contributions to the mathematics world. Seeing her professor's expression change so many times today, Huang Lingling quickly said to Zhong Yi, Teacher Zhong, it's not like this. The teachers are very good to us, I, I. Huang Lei Lei and the other teenagers were also getting nervous. Although they were young, it did not mean that they were stupid. They did not dare to follow up with Zhong Yi's words. Xin Wei was speechless. When she met Zhong Yi for the first time just now, Wu Ziqing had already mentioned that she would not be able to out-argue him. Xin Wei still refused to acknowledge that when it had been said, but now that she knew that this person was Zhong Yi and after hearing what he said, Xin Wei knew that she was not his match. This was Peking University Chinese Department's lecturer, a famous literary genius in the country, how could they, as mathematicians, even think of out-arguing him? Bickering? That Zhong guy did it as a profession. Even when those other literary world professionals had conflict with Zhong Yi, all of them couldn't match up to Zhong Yi in scolding. This person was well known to have won all of his scolding battles throughout the country. The conflict was getting more complicated now. The professors from the Chinese mathematics world were all raging by now, barely able to hold in their anger anymore. Xin Wei felt that this could not go on anymore as it would do nobody any good. They will only become the laughing stock to the Americans. Seeing how Louis and David were looking at them, Xin Wei knew what they were thinking. So, she made a pass to Wu Ziqing as she knew clearly that the only person who would be able to control Zhong Yi was her. She needed Sis Wu's help to control the situation, to make her boyfriend shut up. Privately, Zhong Yi was her boyfriend. Publicly, Zhong Yi was a teacher at Peking University. Now that Zhong Yi had created such a mess, private or publicly, Wu Ziqing had to be responsible for it. Moreover, within this group of people now, only Wu Ziqing had the level and rank to do anything about it. However, Wu Ziqing was still ignoring her and remained unmoved, looking very calm as though it wasn't a big deal. She did not seem like she had any intention of stopping Zhong Yi at all. Xin Wei was already clenching her teeth in frustration and getting quite angry. This old Wu. She's totally given up loyalty now that she's in love. With a boyfriend now, she has totally abandoned a childhood friend like me. Over there, Dean Wang said to Zhong Yi, that's enough. This is the International Math Olympiad, not your house. Don't affect other people just because you want to say something. Han Henian said loudly to Huang Lingling and the other kids, what are you all still standing there for, come back here. The young mathematician from before was also very hating of Zhong Yi now, seeing how Zhong Yi had spared no effort to scold them. He sarcastically said, this is not a place that you should appear at. For someone who cheated with a calculator while attempting to solve a quiz that was meant for the park visitors, you don't deserve to say a thing. At this moment, Xin Wei interjected, all right now, knock it off, everyone. The young mathematician quickly said, Professor Xin, we have to put him in his place. We've been working so hard in our mathematics career and also put in so much effort to groom these children, but what has he done? All he knows is to make sarcastic comments here. I can't let it slide just like this. I can be criticized by anyone else, but not this teacher who even resorted to cheating to win a cell phone. I'm having none of this. When Xin Wei heard this, she frowned and said, he was just joking around earlier. 
Although Zhong Yi did not hold back on her just now and they had only known each other for half a day, he was still her childhood friend's boyfriend. Xin Yi still took into consideration about Wu Ziqing's feelings and tried to put up a good word for him. Besides, with so many foreign mathematicians, park visitors, and the media around, it would be bad to let everyone know that a teacher from the top-rated Peking University had resorted to cheating for a prize. That wouldn't look good on all the parties involved and would only serve to make the current situation worse. Xin Yi might have been angry, but she was still thinking logically. Han Henian said to Huang Lingling, come back now, what are you standing there in a daze for? Huang Lingling hesitated a little and looked at the topic board of the American team. She bit her lips and said, teacher, I, I. Xin Yi said in a consoling manner, don't blame yourself anymore. It's not your fault. This isn't a topic that you would be able to solve and it's not only you. This is a topic that no one in the world is able to solve at the moment. Come back over here, we don't blame any of you. What's lost is already lost and we need to learn from this experience. We can come back again next year. John Yi's words might have been very harsh, but when Xin Yi thought about it, she realized that what he said had in fact made a lot of sense. Huang Lingling lowered her head and said, I'm sorry, I wasn't good enough. Huang Lei Lei and the others also followed her lead and were ready to go back to their teacher's side. However, at this moment, Zhong Yi opened his mouth and said, pick yourself up from where you fell, why wait until next year? When Xin Yi heard this, she wanted to pounce on and bite him. Zhong Yi! You believe that I won't kill you? She was rendered so speechless by Zhong Yi that she nearly vomited blood. She could not understand what old Wu saw in him and why she would find someone like him to be her boyfriend. Weren't you scolding us just now? Scolding us for mistreating the children and pushing the responsibility of losing onto them? All right, you made sense in saying that, but am I not consoling and encouraging the children now? So? Why are you against that now? Why are you asking them to regain their honor now? You can't even wait for next year? What the heck were you trying to do? Many of those present at the venue could not understand what was going on. Both Huang Lingling and Huang Lei Lei raised their heads to look at Zhong Yi and wondered what he was trying to say. Zhong Yi had a quick look at Dale's conjecture on the topic board and smiled to himself, then turned around to Huang Lingling and said, What's your name? Huang Lingling. She answered quickly. Zhong Yi pointed at the topic board and asked her, Do you wish to solve that and regain your honor? Huang Lingling was stunned. She nervously grasped her shoulders and said, Of course. I would like to, but, but. All right. Zhong Yi put his hand out, can you lend me your marker? Huang Lingling immediately handed her marker pen over and asked, Teacher Zhong, what are you going to do? What do you need my marker pen for? Zhong Yi did not answer her and just said, help big bro with a little something, will you? Of course I will. Huang Lingling agreed without even thinking. Zhong Yi held the empty board beside the topic board which was reserved for anyone who wanted to to attempt it. It was similar to the whiteboards in school and was supported by a frame with caster wheels, help me to get a few more of these whiteboards. Huang Lingling asked, how many do you need? Zhong Yi narrowed his eyes before replying, about 50 of them. Huang Lingling was a little taken aback, ah? Huang Lei Lei was also stunned, 50 of those whiteboards? What are you trying to do? Xin Yi had a bad feeling about it. She felt that he would be doing something really crazy is this time. Zhong Yi looked at her and simply said, I'll do what needs to be done. Huang Lingling bit her lips nervously, all right, I will get them for you. As soon as she said that, she ran off over to the United Kingdom team and spoke in jittery English to their young participants. Finally, with a thanks in English, she managed to get several whiteboards from them and went back to Zhong Yi. When Huang Lei Lei and the other Chinese team youth saw this, they followed suit. The park visitors were getting more and more curious as to what was happening. What's going on? Why does Zhong Yi need so many whiteboards for? The number of whiteboards being pushed over made a lot of noise with the caster wheels rolling over the uneven ground. The members of the media did not know what was going on, all they did was continue to take as many photographs as they could. The Chinese mathematicians, including Wang Yiming and Han Henian, also looked over. 
the mathematicians from the United Kingdom and French team slowly gathered around as well. Louis and David from the American team raised their heads, frowning and staring at Zhong Yi. Do you know how much you can write on a whiteboard? These were similar to the whiteboards they had in schools, but asking for 50 of them. Disregarding anything else, just this scene's magnificence was already too great. Almost all of the whiteboards made available for this event alone had been pushed over and a sea of white enveloped Zhong Yi. Huang Lingling was panting after pushing the last one over, Teacher Zhong, I've gathered all of them for you. Huang Lei Lei and the other children were also wiping sweat off their foreheads. Thank you. Zhong Yi patted her on the head, what you've lost earlier, I will help you gain it back. Come, grab a chair and sit beside me. Let Big Bro show you how to teach the foreigners a lesson. Ah. This is. Could it be? Then, under the eye-popping gaze of the park visitors, foreigners and those Chinese mathematicians, he untwisted the cap off the marker pen and pulled a whiteboard over, and even relaxingly yawned, and then without a thought he put the tip of the marker pen onto the surface of the whiteboard and began writing. Only at this time did everyone finally understand. F asterisk asterisk K. This bast asterisk asterisk D intended to attempt to solve this problem? He was going to demonstrate proof of a conjecture that no one else in this world was able to. Chapter 520, A Shocking Hypothesis On Weibo The live updates of pictures and commentary posts from Summer Palace Park suddenly stopped at this moment and it stayed quiet for a few seconds. Then, a Weibo video streamed live from the venue by a netizen suddenly exploded with views. F asterisk asterisk K that shit. Teacher Jong must be going crazy. Heavens! Teacher Zhong is going to attempt to do math? Many netizens were posting on the live video's comment section with unintelligible comments. As most of them were not at the event, they did not understand the exact situation and quickly asked for updates. What's the matter? Quick, someone explain what's going on. I'm so anxious right now, what is Zhong Yi up to this time? Many of Zhong Yi's old friends also found out about the live stream and tuned in as well. Yao Jintsai posted a comment, I'm late? Is something big happening again? Peking University Chinese Department Su Na, what do you mean by attempting a math problem? Following that, a newly registered Weibo account named, Zhong Yi's mother, also posted, but as the person did not seem to be too well versed with technology, a string of random characters appeared, hash $53 dot. The owner of the account was, as it claimed, Zhong Yi's mother. She had also kept pace with technology and learned about getting online with Weibo, joining in to get the latest updates about her son. Pa. A photo of the venue and happenings was posted. Zhong Yi was sitting in front of a whiteboard with his left hand placed in his pocket and his right hand holding a marker pen. He was writing some numbers and formulas on the whiteboard, which was not understood by the common layman. Beside him were some Americans whose faces were in a shock and another whiteboard that was filled with writings. The Chinese mathematicians, like Han Henian, also appeared near the boundary of the photo and like the Americans, his face was full of shock too. What was the atmosphere at the scene like? The photo had depicted it clearly. The netizens could even feel the excitement and shock like they were there as their hearts started pounding heavily. Say something. What on earth is going on? What is Zhong Yi doing? What kind of math question is that? And why are the mathematicians all looking with faces like that? Why are their eyes like that? What are they looking at? People who are at the scene. Please do a live stream. Before anyone who was present at the event itself could reply, a netizen suddenly exclaimed and asked, that whiteboard at the side. Could it be Dale's conjecture? I can't be wrong. It definitely has to be. The Americans must have once used Dale's conjecture as the topic for this year's International Math Olympiads after event once again. What's Dale's conjecture? Is it a very difficult problem? It sounds a little familiar. What do you mean it sounds a little familiar? This is an unprovable conjecture in the world of mathematics. It's one of the top 10 math problems in the world. The reputation and name of Dale's conjecture should have been known by many, even outside of the mathematics world. Then, someone who was present at the event clarified with a post, yes, teacher Zhong is going to, attempt to solve the problem. He wants to regain the reputation for the Chinese on behalf of the children. Ah. 
attempting to solve? Solve Dale's conjecture? Holy sure asterisk T. The netizens expressed their disbelief one by one. At the venue. The crowds were also reacting in the exact same way as the netizens did. Han Henian nearly fainted. Did Zhong Yi skip breakfast this morning and arrive here with a rusty brain? The most experienced mathematician, the old professor was shaking his head so much that he was already feeling dizzy. This Zhong Yi was too overconfident. He would disgrace himself in front of all these people. The children had already disgraced us. And now, you would also do the same? Could you even begin to understand or not? Don't you know what Dale's conjecture stood for? Don't you understand what Dale's conjecture meant to the mathematics world? It was a wall. It was a barrier and it had not been crossed by anyone in the last few decades. Did you think it was just simple arithmetic like 1 plus 1? Did you think this was a head of cabbage? A cabbage that could be plucked if you just used your hands? For anyone to even dare attempt to solve Dale's conjecture or had an idea on how to do it, there were only a handful of them. These people were the mathematicians at the pinnacle of the mathematics world and only they would dare to approach it in this manner. For others like the Chinese mathematics professors or teachers, they did not even dare to dream about solving Dale's conjecture. That's because they knew where they stood and they knew their own abilities very well. But you're now attempting to solve it. How big are those balls of yours? You're really a fearless one. Although Xin Yi had an inkling of Zhong Yi stirring up something big, she had not expected to be what was unfolding before her eyes now. She was so speechless that she couldn't even form an opinion on it. The only thing that she wanted to do now was to turn to her childhood friend to advise her to break up with this person immediately. This person was too damn undependable. Just in one day, in the past hour, how much trouble has this boyfriend of yours stirred up? From cheating to win a cell phone, to scolding the mathematics world, and now he's even shamelessly attempting to solve a conjecture that has the whole mathematics world stifled? Just what kind of level of difficulty was Dale's conjecture perceived to be? If you asked any industry insider to choose their top 10 most difficult math problems, then Dale's conjecture would definitely be on the list and it would definitely be in the top half of it. And no one would object to that. This was a publicly acknowledged constant in the mathematics world, also known as Dale's conjecture. And you? Which rock did you spring out from? You're just a celebrity from the entertainment circle, a learner of literature. A teacher who teaches in the Chinese department. From head to toe, all you reek of is the liberal arts, so why the heck were you trying to step into the field of mathematics? And you're even headed straight at Dale's conjecture? There was a collective silence in the Chinese mathematics world. After understanding from their translators, those foreigner mathematicians also looked dumbfoundedly over at the Chinese youth holding the marker, standing in front of a whiteboard. They could not understand why all of the Chinese people had such silly bravados. First, it was the children, now, it was followed by an adult. The park visitors observing were already in a chatter of discussion. Does teacher Zhong know mathematics? What can he possibly know? Didn't someone just say that teacher Zhong used a calculator just to do a five-figure multiplication problem? How would he know anything then? There's nothing to critique about teacher Zhong's literary talents. He has to be the top in that field within the entire country. Everyone would be convinced by that argument, but math, f asterisk asterisk k. I don't even know what to say anymore. This has to be the most courageous display of guts ever. Everyone was too shocked by this silly bravery of Zhong Yi to notice what he was writing on the whiteboard. They were all constrained by their bias and had already prejudged that he wasn't the real deal. How could a celebrity solve a mathematical conjecture? Wouldn't it be an international joke if he did? Louis had a look of contempt on his face. The American mathematician, David, also laughed mockingly, if Dale's conjecture could be so easily proven, then Dale's conjecture wouldn't be known as Dale's conjecture in the first place. Although he spoke in English and Zhong Yi's standard of English wasn't too good, at the very least, he had a passable level of understanding since he was a proper graduate after all. Huang Lingling could feel the gaze of everyone on them and was already struggling with the attention now. She wasn't afraid that she would be a disgrace, but that her idol, Teacher Zhong would lose face because of her. Because of this, she said to him, Teacher Zhong, why don't we, why don't we forget this? 
This conjecture must be really difficult, so let's. Zhong Yi paused his writing momentarily and smiled at her. Then he said in a kindly to her, remember my words about not caring about those who doubt you. When you become successful, they will become the clowns. All you need to do is to do your best and that will be enough. How else do you think Big Bro managed to survive in the entertainment circle until now? If I were to react to everything that they pick on about me, then would I still have time to do my work? Huang Lingling affirmatively nodded, I'll remember that for sure. Do you understand what this is? Zhong Yi pointed at his writings on the whiteboard. Huang Lingling looked hard at them and shook her head in confusion, I understood a bit of those calculations but. At least she could understand some of the calculations, but Huang Lei Lei and the other children standing beside couldn't understand any of it. Zhong Yi did not care about anyone else except for these children right now. He raised the marker once more and continued to write on, then smiled and said, it's all right if you don't understand it now, all of you are talented enough and will be able to understand it in the future. After saying that, he occasionally pointed out to some of the writings to guide them along. Do you understand what this conjecture is about? Dale's conjecture was also Fermat's last theorem from Zhong Yi's previous world. It stated that no three positive integers a, b, and c can satisfy the equation a to the power of n plus b to the power of n equals c to the power of n for any integer value of n greater than 2. Huang Lingling, Huang Lei Lei, and the other children nodded lightly, we understand that. We've heard that many of the great mathematicians from other countries have proven it for many iterations of n, like when n equals 3 or n equals 4, all of which were validated. But Zhong Yi said as he laughed, then remember what I say now. These mathematicians who have contributed that much to Dale's conjecture are not really that great, nor are their contributions. Huang Lingling could only react with an, ah. Her brother was also sweating by now, what? Xin Wei, dollar hash. When the mathematicians and participants around them heard Zhong Yi's snide comments, all of them became so angry that they had to clench their teeth in order to control their temper. After hearing the translator's explanation of what he said, Louis said coldly, what are you saying? As a few of the n equals? Proofs were researched and completed by the American mathematicians over a long period of time with a huge amount of resources and effort poured in. He was angered by the fact that a young Chinese person had simply brushed it off as a small contributions. All of the mathematicians were unable to accept what Zhong Yi had stated. Han Henian shouted, you're just a Chinese teacher, what would you know? Xin Wei sighed and said, I have to remind you, teacher Zhong. Let's not blabber nonsense around here, all right? These words of his were really too offensive as every top talent of the global mathematics world had been trying hard to advance the studies of Dale's conjecture, but a simple brush off from Zhong Yi totally rendered their studies as fruitless. Zhong Yi continued not to be bothered by anyone and just guided the children along on his whiteboard. The solution to most mathematical conjectures usually start off with weakening the conjecture. If you can weaken the conjecture and prove it, then you can advance a little closer towards the original conjecture. This is the process of solving most conjectures, but what many of these mathematicians do not know is that this method does not suit the solving of Dale's conjecture. Whether it's n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals u10, n equals u100 or n equals u1000. This method of proving would look like it is advancing the study closer to the solution, but in fact, none of them have much meaning at all. Even if they could advance this weakening method a long way ahead, with it, they still wouldn't be able to prove Dale's conjecture. These people have all been walking down the wrong path the entire time. Can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story.